Okay, well, look, hello everyone. Um, please tell me if the sound is, if you can hear me. Um, I'm here to comment on the final game of the Fusao Lanka Cup, Lanka Cup, I think it's called. Yes. So, um, yeah, someone was talking about that in the chat. It's uh, uh, the woodcutter. Uh, one of the names of Go in Sri Lanka. So that's the rotted axe handles. A woodcutter who was watching a game so so long that his uh, axe rotted. Okay, good. Uh, thanks for commenting on the sound. I hope it's okay. Yeah, yeah, I changed my... Uh, I did have a haircut. Yes. Thanks for noticing. It's, um, <laughs> I am 13, yo. Okay. Uh, so let's go back to the beginning. And see some moves here. Okay, so this actually, this opening that Black has played is something that is gradually gaining in popularity. So it seems to work fairly well with the the high um, to space, the big shimari here. And this pincer. So, uh, thank you, uh, Pro Barukwechi. Uh, Pro Go Barukwechi, that is, yes. Okay, great. Um, so, I think I said this, was it in regards to game number one, in which I said that it was one of the more, oh, PhD 20, thank you very much. It's one of the more difficult pincers to understand, just because one of the main reasons being that white has a lot of choices, a lot of options in how to answer directly. So, um, locally, um, I would say that First of all, there's jumping out here. Um, I think this was the game. Let's just take the game one move forward. So there, that's the game move. And there's also this move. So these two are relatively safe to play in any in any board position um, because you can be pretty sure Black's going to answer here. So White will have an idea of some kind of a pincer on the top. So in the game he played here, he could have played here. So uh, one of those two is probably the plan. Ah. I'm having some issues with my sound here, so I, I hope it's not too bad. Um, and yes. So yes, and this one... This one also, you can generally expect, expect black to place either, either here or here, something on this side. And that means white can push here. So something like this. Uh, or like this. So one of these three moves. And white can get a fairly strong position. Or black can pull back and white will play here. In this case, um, playing somewhere around here to put some pressure on the corner is also an option. So something like this might happen. So these are the two moves that white can play in just about any board position. And then there are moves like this. This is really, it, it's going to be really very, very difficult. And it probably doesn't work with a black shimari and never left, but it, it depends on the exact position of all the stones on the board. So there's a ladder involved, of course, and the position of the stones in the upper left corner is relevant to how this joseki is going to work. So it's sort of tricky in that way. And the lower right corner. So it's, everything is has something to do with it. And there's this one, in which, again, the ladder has to do with it. Um, let's see, the ladder generally favors black. So, for instance, and also there's a, um, the upper left corner has a lot to do with this one also. So there's these more complicated moves, which uh, white probably doesn't want to play in this opening. So he jumped out. And played here. So this is another thing that makes this Joseki relatively... Uh, difficult to understand is the fact that while we used to think that white was going to play something very uh, local, so um, for instance something like this, and before AIs we used to like this Joseki also, so it, this sort of works with a white stone in the lower right corner to sort of support this stone, so you'd get a fight like, uh, sometimes you'd get a fight like this. This was actually one of the games, very similar to one of the games that Shinjin So played against AlphaGo the master version of AlphaGo, he played this Joseki and he got into a lot of trouble actually. 
with the white stumps. Um, and people don't play this so much nowadays, after we've started using AFs. So usually white plays a pincer on the top side or plays away. So if white plays away, it could be any of these um, other parts of the board, like this uh, This corner would be a good corner to be playing a corner and closer. And as I said, white can play this pincer, in which case the local move would probably be for Jap playing, uh, black playing some kind of extension here. Or black could play away. And this move, it's a wider, wider pincer, if you're calling it a pincer against the black stone. And this move is more about the upper left corner. So we're going to see that in the game. So white plays here. This gives black a lot of room on the top side. So that's what we're seeing with black playing the extension here and jumping. Trying to put um, pressure on the white group in the upper right on a large scale. And what these two moves that white played on the top side are doing here are they are setting up this move. So this is another Joseki. And yes, someone in the comments um, wondered how much um, how much the players had prepared for this exact position. And I wouldn't be surprised if they have actually they're still in their preparation at this point. So it's a it's an opening where Black has played with ideas to start a fight on the top side, and he's probably fairly deeply researched the whole Joseph the whole opening. And so this is probably part of his preparation. And I wouldn't be surprised if White has also. But um, uh, this Joseki in the upper left is something the players know uh, as a Joseki also. So not uh, always in the same context of this board position. They, uh, they would know to play this, these moves anyway. Okay, so when White plays an attachment against uh, the star point, at the star point against the black shimari, black has three or four choices. So two extensions, two hanes. So when your opponent plays an attachment against your stone, so that's the two stones right next to each other, you generally have a choice of an extension or a hanes. So it's this move, this move, this move, the two extensions, and the two hanes. And so let's go through them one at a time. This was the game move. I'll take this one last. Um, and there's this move. If black plays here, white's going to play here. Pretty much forced to cut. And the corner is big, so black's going to connect. White's going to save that stone for the time being. Black needs to do something for the three stones. And it turns into a fight, something like this. And this is complicated enough in itself, but it's... In general, it's probably good for white. For, for the time being, white's putting some pressure on the corner and is probably going to get a position on the left side. Something like this, white gets a position on the left side and the top side, just because the corner is not 100% and black's group on the outside here is not 100%, it means that white will be able to fight to a certain degree on the top side also. So rather than do this, uh, black chose to extend here. I'm sorry, to, to extend here. Uh, another Hane, um, I'm doing Hanes first because usually when you have a local advantage, a local uh, majority of stones, so black does seem to have more stones in the immediate area, you try to find a more active move, which would be a Hane. But the problem with this in this case is that the ladder, when black does this, the ladder favors white. And in fact, it's not even a ladder, but it, um, in some cases it involves the ladder anyway. Um, and so just generally white would extend there. And with the two stones on the right, this can be a bit troublesome. So white's looking to squeeze from one side or the other. Uh, so for instance, probably something like this. Squeezing from the outside, sacrificing three stones at the point. So for instance, um, this, this could be... A, an example of white sacrificing the the stones in the corner to get a nice, a strong position on that side towards the left side of the board. So that would be white's idea in this case. So if we just imagine that all those uh, adjacent stones were not there, 
and the ladder favored black, then of course black would be able to cut here. The ladder would favor black. Okay, this move is not usually not so good. It gives white a lot of space. So it's um it's not really a main main line choice that black has. It's more likely that black's gonna play this move, which was the game move. So let's go one more move forward in the game. Okay. Yeah, they are playing some moves there, so I should probably think of catching up. When black plays here, white has the choice of um, jumping, which would be something like this. This was actually an option. I, I would have probably played this way, in which white is sort of trading to the left side of the board, so hoping to make some influence towards the left side of the board, giving the corner to black. And the other option was played in the game. So otherwise, black, white plays here. And when white plays a hane on the second line here, white's looking at this cut on the third line, put some pressure on black. So that's why black was answering here. And white got to make a... This is... I would call this a settled shape for white on the top side. So like in some extreme situations, uh, sometimes black can extend here and maybe make some trouble here. But it's very unlikely that the, this group is going to die. So I'd say in most cases, I'd call this a, the, a, group, a white group that is settled, has a base. So that's it for, for this local fight, and black played away. Okay, getting back to the top right, we sort of left those two white stones hanging. But they're pretty much, they're more mobile than they might seem, because black really needs to kick here once in order to start attacking white. Otherwise, white would have a potential life in the corner. And so when black kicks there, uh, white might play a hane, might, maybe not, but maybe play a hane there. White still has room to be moving out, for instance, something like this, towards the center. Um, so it's not as if black can capture those two stones with just one move. So that's why the two players are leaving it for a while. And then there's this move. So this move is a move I think, I sort of think that it's impossible for a player to do this uh, move unless they've researched this to a certain degree. So I... Um, I'm not sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if White has studied this opening at some point. And these, nowadays we have um, AIs, of course, so we do study these openings fairly deeply. And although I haven't studied this move, it's the type of move that you really need to have a lot of background information, you can say. You have to know know what you're doing if you're going to play a wild move like this. Okay, generally we say that it's good for black to press here. So this exchange was supposedly good. And black's continuing to play away. Okay, we jump forward. So let's get back to the game. And after playing those two exchanges on the bottom side, uh, black pushed here. So yes. This, this move that Black played at Q14, so I'm talking about this move here, this exchange in the lower right corner, it tends to work well with the Joseki in the upper right when White is going to be forced to push on the fourth, on the fifth line. So just uh, let's see how far that went. Didn't go very far, did it? So if we say that, um, let's say... Let's say uh, white pushed here. And in a position like this, uh, basically it's just, it's really good for black to have that stone at Q14 making an extension um, from white's solid position, from black's solid position in the upper right. So black's uh, building a territory there, and the upper right is solid enough that that one stone usually is good enough to make an area that white probably won't want to uh, jump into. And so it's a very efficient way of making a position, an area, on the right side of the board. So that's how that is working. And of course, if black had not played it, and had a similar uh, sequence going on... Okay, it just makes uh, a difference when white does stuff like this and black cuts. It's a lot better to have that exchange in. Um, I'm probably getting to a variation I should. It's, it's going to be a bit complicated. Or, um, 
or if we even if we assume death, it's it's not a wasted move even in this case. So yeah, I, I think that just generally works really well with that position in the upper left. Okay, so this was the idea when White played that shoulder hit at L uh, L5 was that White had this push on the fifth line here, which was forcing, and then could cover here. And I really actually thought that White was going to push once more here before, before playing this. In, in this variation, uh, maybe White's not even going to uh, connect that stuff. So like, uh, I don't, maybe, maybe variations like this. In this case, um, it's, this isn't what we call a ponuki because Black has an extra stone at four. So that's a wasted stone that Black has there. And sometimes White can sacrifice that stone. So in order to do that, I was expecting White to start with the push one, well, actually. But he just did that immediately. And we get into this variation where um, none of the groups are alive, so it's going to be exciting. Yeah, I'd say all six sort of started a fight, although, yes. Definitely. That was Black's cut on the fifth line. Right, so uh, Samu Samu was asking, could White consider a pincer on the right side to avoid giving Black what he wants there? And the the problem with that, um, just, just leaving top right for the time being, the problem with that is that uh, the pincer stone is not always so strong. So White can do that, but it, it does depend on the top right position and it's not a position where white is going to be um, attacking. So white's going to be on the passive side in this fight here. Um, and black will have option, have opportunities to be attacking. So, um, it doesn't really work when we have this big fight starting at the upper right anyway. Okay, let's get back to the game. So he jumps out. For the time being, that is black cannot push through the cut. So it looks like Black might have some forcing moves on the left. Yeah. Okay, it's White's turn then. So this fight is so wild that um, I'm actually sort of looking for a time to talk a bit about the uh, the second game because I didn't do a live stream for the second game. Yes, Lev Kester in Twitch is saying they played the opening very fast, and I agree. Um, I agree that, yes, he's saying that maybe it was prepared, and I, I agree to a certain degree. I think that at least the um, the first, let's see, how many stones was that? Let's see if I can get a move number here. Uh about the first 35 moves, and maybe even a part of uh, part way into this fight that they've started there on the top right. Uh, they probably had prepared it. Um, but it's... I wouldn't be surprised if they're moving outside of their research at this point. Like It would be very formidable if a player had actually researched this exact fight. Okay. Uh, maybe we have time to take a quick look at game number two. That's W. Zhang asked, asking about game number two. And I can actually, I have it here. I can show it to you. Let's see, where do I put this? Okay, up here. Okay. A different, different program. So in this game, Shin Jinzo had black. So just um, just remember that. I'm, I'm not going to change the colors on the right here. It's, um, it's I'm just showing you the moves of the second game for a bit. And, and Shin Jinzo had black. This is actually playing the corner and closer from the star point here is something that is it's a it's one of the new openings that has been played. Sort of similar in the overall thing to uh, the opening where Black has played a 3-4 three, 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 point and a, a big Shimari, a two-space Shimari, or a large knight Shimari. It's only that the, the stone here is uh, it's on a star point instead of being on a 3-4 point. And so it's more influence 
oriented, more closer to the center, you might say, than and less about territory. Okay, so yes, white played a Kakari. This is all stuff that we've seen before, and then black plays a pincer here. White jumps out. Um, this is really modern, the way white is playing high moves in response to black's pincer. Um, people would, in the past, I think people would be thinking of more mundane moves like an extension here. That's not as good. So the um, playing on the top here, and... Of course, white was threatening to surround black there, so black poked out, and then taking the corner uh, to live in the lower right corner. Seemed to be the right idea. So this all here, it's, it's almost like a joseki here. And black is um, reinforcing the corner while helping his group on the right side. Uh, white's group in the center it has one eye. Everything is pretty easy, uh, even about at this point. Uh, playing a fairly common Joseki in the upper left. And yes, big points. This was always a big point. And finally, black plays here. So this is a way to reduce the left side. Usually I would play here. Um, and white would probably, maybe white would play something on the lower side. Somewhere around uh, the top side, something like this or like this. It's probably pretty big. From Black's point of view, attaching here is a big move because it would be putting some pressure on the white stones and it would be finishing the top side for Black. So this was a bit of a surprise, but um, this is where the game got really excited, exciting. And yes, so Black, this was a forcing move, uh, threatening to kill White here with this move. So White answered that. Those two points were Mi'ai, so if Black had played from the other side, White would be would sacrifice two stones there. But it wouldn't really be worth it for Black yet to capture those stones. So that's how that was working. And uh, here, and here. Up to this point, the game was just about even. And White peeped here. So this was a strong attack. Um, hoping to cut off the two black groups. And this is where the game got really uh, dangerous for both sides. Black peeped here and connected. So here, like, um, with this move, black was actually setting up a weakness in the corner. So if black had simply played here, then he would not know how white would answer that later. So maybe white's gonna, if white's worried about some bad Aji in the corner, sometimes white would be playing here to get a more secure corner territory. So he wanted to play that exchange uh, before when white had only the choice, white's only choice was being to play here. So there was some meaning in pushing through at that time. Okay, so up to this point the game is still close. Only um, when I looked with it, looked at it with Katago, uh, this uh, was really bad um, when Black answered here. And so it turns out the position on the right was um, very precarious for Black and actually for White also. So for instance, if White had pushed through now, then Black would be able to try to um, surround. So the idea here is that black can surround, and this move is forcing towards the left side, which stops white from doing any attempts to cut, and black would be able to finish the connection with the two black groups. So the, group, the black stones here on the right, and the black stones on the bottom, they're going to be secure if they all get to link up like this. In this case, they would be connected. And so once white played... Uh, this move jumped out here that changed the status of what was happening on the right and when black answered that on the left like this this allowed white to pursue and cut here black actually just pushed it but if black had continued here um, white does have to back up once but it's not easy for black to connect up this group so like um, whatever black does there's going to be cutting points all over the place black plays here there's still this this kind of thing this would cut black off. 
uh, or lose three stones. There's there's also this here. So there's a lot of problem potential problems that black has, and it's a very flimsy connection. So this extra white stone at J8 here um, is making a huge difference. So that's why when white played here, let's see, move back once more, uh, a bit more. So let's see. So when white jumped out here, that's why black had to answer on this side. So in this case, there would be no cut. So if white pushes through and cuts now, black can just capture this. So they're, they're just dead. So it would capture the three white stones. So this would be making a, a little territory for black, and it would be connecting the group. And uh, this stuff on the left side, it, um, black would not. Black has an eye on the bottom side, so black can play here at some point. And it's going to give black an eye there, and should be able to make another eye here. So when the group on the right is strong like this, black was perfectly okay. Um, in the game, well, okay, I've jumped back, back in. So in the game, let's see. When white played here, black answered on this side. And this was worse than it might look, because now black could not answer this way and was playing a bit more passively. But the two black groups got cut off. So he has to live on the right side. And that is alive. So like if white plays here, black's going to play here. Black does have two eyes. But this group in the corner is getting pushed around. And now, because white got to reinforce in the center, and black lost half of his eye on the bottom side, so some of that eye is, is gone now, it made the whole fight much more difficult for black. Um, and black is trying to respond strongly. At this point, the game favors white. Uh, but black it's not as if black's going to collapse completely if he jumps out, for instance. It's just that um, he probably felt it was not good enough. So in this case, White would be able to uh, maybe play here and connect connect up to the corner. Maybe he didn't like that idea. He wanted to find a more active move. And he plays here. So he's looking for something in the corner, and it didn't work out. So this was like the final... This was where it started to get really bad for Xin Jinzo in game number two. I'm, I'm looking at game number two right now, just for those of you who have just jumped in. So, um, so Xin Jinso has the black stones in this game number two, and this is the game that Gu Jihao won uh, to make it an even score. And so you can see black trying stuff in the corner. It's just uh, white has enough outside liberties that it's not going to work. And so this became pretty serious because black did not have two eyes now. So white added a stone to the corner. And if, let's see, did he play the, he didn't kick. So if he kicked here, um, black can make an eye on the bottom side. Black can make a, an eye here. Black can make an eye on the bottom here. So for instance, let's see, how is he going to do it? Oh yeah, so there's, it's interfering with black's group in the corner. So he can't really live. So that was, uh, that's the problem. And so it's sort of awkward for him to try to live here because although he can make an eye on this side, when he makes an eye on this side, he actually needs one more move. So if he plays on this side, that's, that's not a real eye. There's no way, there was no way for him to make a real eye there without adding another stone. It means he's going to get into trouble on this. So it's worse than I had thought. Um, and it's really, although he could live, it's getting really awkward. So that's why he, just jumping back a, a bit, that's why he, uh, he was supposed to, he should have been jumping out somewhere around. There. So maybe without that peep here, but in any case, if he jumped out, he wouldn't have been in such dire straits. But in the game, it actually became awkward for Black even to try to live. So... He played here, so he's trying to counterattack, and this killed the black group actually. So what in the end, it turned out that black's group just died. So all of this is he's trying to capture a white group. In response, he doesn't have any way to make two eyes now. He has half an eye on the bottom here, so that's if he adds a stone, that's going to be an eye. 
he has half an eye on the left, so he doesn't have any, he doesn't have two eyes. He can't make two eyes. So white slided. This actually uh, makes a connection on the first line. And black's trying to chase a white group, but his stones aren't so strong either. So here white is just uh, white's group in the center. White has to deal with that too, but that's what white's doing. So white's creating problems for black and living on the left side, living in the center. Black's attacking white on the right here, but it's actually it's not big enough to for white to be worried about. So white's playing away for a bit. That made this only um, black can't even make an eye here now. So it's it's even worse. <laughs> and now white's just reinforcing the center. So this was a kind of a hard crash for Xin Jin So, and this is where the game ended. So white's group in the center here. Uh, it's okay because black actually needs a stone here and white can be connected to the right here which would make um, looks like it would make two eyes for the white group or white could be connected to the center here because uh, this actually captures three black stones and this white group on the bottom side it has only one eye here but it does have uh, this move that would connect to the right and this move that would connect there and a race to capture is probably good for white too. So pretty so there's no way for black to win basically. So he resigned. So that was um a pretty hard crash for black in this game. That was the second game of the series. So let's get back to today's today's game. Okay, here we are. All right, so we got three more moves while we were looking at game number two. And let's see, I'll get rid of that screen. So here we are. So it was uh, these three moves. Black played the Kosumi. So, um, so if white answers on this side, black can push through and cut. So that's what the Kosumi there is doing. So the marked... The stone with a triangle on it is setting this cut up. And white played here. So this um, this defends against the push through and the cut. And also it's uh, yeah, it's forcing black to connect on that side. So in this case, black can still push through there, but it's a bit more trouble. So let's just make a diagram doing that. So it would be something like that, and white's looking at us uh, get a, a net here. So that would be bad for black. And it's not a ladder, actually, but uh, this would probably be pretty painful anyway, even if white just gets to do that. So this is one way it could actually turn out, I guess. Yeah. And white's probably going to get a lot out of that sweeps. Um, I'm not so sure about these five white stones. They might be, they might be killed. But white will be have potential to get something back on this side. There's a peep there that's forcing to. Or white can play here. Usually you can get it some time. Or play here to look for some profit on the right side. A potential continuation. So let's see if they play that way. Um, if white answers on this side, of course, I think this would be good enough for black to capture the two stones. Okay. All right, so white did push through. And so I was showing this variation where white is looking at a net on the left and a squeeze on the right. Um, black's other option would be to push through here. And the latter favors black, so white can't cut here. And so this will give black a fairly strong position towards the center. So like this white would be sort of pretty badly split up here. So as far as the group in the center is concerned, uh, black has a strong position. 
Not so sure about Black's group on the top, though. Uh, Black might be, in this variation, Black might be actually considering the idea of sacrificing uh, most of that group if White continues playing on the side. Or White might, if Black played here, White might just connect it. And I think, again, in this case, maybe Black would capture So I'd say it's one of one of those two for black. Um, pushing through here or pushing through here. Allowing white to play like this would be, it would be a very good shape for white in the center. So I don't think that's an option. But counting is, uh, yeah. Okay, but that is an interesting um, question from MTP234. Counting at this point is pretty vague. It's pretty pointless, basically. But whose position do I favor? So I could... Um, you have a black territory in the upper left, which is probably somewhere at least 10 points. White has a territory probably on the lower left area. Black has a corner in the upper right. White has a corner in the lower right. So I'd say the territory... Um, maybe I would guess that it's looking about even. So... Um, and of course, the importance of this fight that they're having in the upper right area it's very very important so uh, my positional judgment would be mostly just depending on this local fight and i everything else looks close enough to even that i don't really worry about um and also i would say in general um Counting territories is, if you do it at all, it's something you should probably be doing in the end game. Uh, when they're actually territories, usually. <laughs> and they're not, uh, at this point, like you don't know if that lower right corner is actually going to be a white territory. Um, even relatively solid areas like the lower left corner or the top right corner, which um, some people would call them territories, but in actual play, that can turn around. So we don't really know. And so, um, early, early in the game, it's okay just, if you're going to count at all, you could count the number of areas, which is, it looks like it's like the upper right, the upper left, and the lower left and the lower right. Um, I'd say they have two areas each. Okay, white does have to be a bit careful about black pushing through on the sixth line there. So that would be I, that's I6. Um, Pushing through there is annoying. But white has various ways of getting rid of that. So one would be to attach. So I think if white played something like this, like this would deal with this by creating a hanging connection there. Without that, black can actually cut here and capture these white stones. So that would be bad. Yeah, it looks difficult for white to save those stumps. Could be, let's see, could he make a co of some kind? Yeah, this is probably just a lot of trouble for white. It's very dangerous. Looks like maybe white can save it, though. Um, yeah. It's probably not a very realistic variation anyway. In this case, White did win by one move, but there's other bad stuff that could happen. So I'm, I'm not really thinking that this is something that White's going to jump into. Um, maybe White, this would be a safe looking move. Um, and after playing that exchange, Black would probably want to play here now. So that's the idea with Black's move there. Uh, so white's, I would say white's probably going to answer some one, one of these local moves. One of these local moves would be reason. Okay, MTT MTP two three four again is saying, um, just from a naive perspective of who I would like to play as. I kind of prefer black here. So, like, that's that's the way I would suggest you should be thinking about. 
uh, because uh, having an opinion like that actually is it's actually more useful than trying to count the territory at this point. Ezra Kayam is asking, what do you see as changes in the theory of pro training nowadays? Okay. So before we had um, superhuman AIs, um, it was very difficult to uh, have a reliable positional judgment in various opening positions. So like uh, humans are pretty good at counting in the end. In fact, um, AlphaGo, for instance, did a lot of mistakes in the end game that human professionals would not make. Um, but it wasn't an issue because AlphaGo was winning anyway. It wasn't an issue for AlphaGo then. Oh. But uh, in the opening, it's relatively difficult for humans to have a solid judgment of how the game is going. So it, um, in this position, for instance, it looks fairly even, um, but uh, just offhand. You need to calculate a great deal and, and sort of the computer, the, the AI will be able to look more deeply into the position and, and actually give uh, a number of value uh, to how good white is or not. So, and I'm actually thinking maybe it looks a bit better for white. At this point, um, so it looks like the top side pushing through there on the third line and playing in the center uh, maybe could be me. Yeah. Or at the very least, white should be able to capture those black stones. So if um, L6, can white block himself at maybe it's I6? Uh huh. Or is it better to contribute a stone to continue killing black? At, it's probably better to kill black at the, at the top. So that's, um, okay, I should go back to Ezra's question. So the changes in the theory, I'd say that um, it allows players to much more deeply research the openings. Uh, even if they're not just blindly following variations shown by the computer, uh, which at players at this level, they're not. They um, they are helped a great deal by the fact that the computer can give them a numbered value for the positions they come up with. So, um, especially at the top levels of playing, uh, these players are um, developing new openings. And they're, um, they're able to do that more quickly and with more assurance because they have these uh, numeric values, these values that the computer attaches to various positions. So white is trying to take away black's eyes on the top while saving the four stones, so stopping black from pushing through on the sixth line. Okay. So, uh, okay, so if we assume black connects, to a variation. If we assume black connects, then white would be able to... Um, white could play... If white plays here, this is going to resemble the variation I was talking about earlier, where it looks like white can actually connect underneath. It's something like this. So it's not as if it's, um, it's going to die in this case. So this was a position where white actually could connect underneath might be a quo of some kind after all. So for instance this would be a co variation. So black would play here and go down here and throw in here. And a very uh I that happened fairly quickly maybe, but it's just because it's kind of a standard sequence thing. So going back to this Cutting at 11 instead of doing this was a way of filling white's liberties. So in this case, black has three liberties and white has four. So white's going to win by one move. If black starts with this, now usually you don't like to give your opponent a capture like that, but it actually does set up a shortage of liberty to. 
where black can throw in and make a co out of it. So this would be a co. Probably bad for white, actually. So if that's bad for white, okay, he played a different move. But if black had connected here, then maybe white was going to play here. So in this case, um, looks like white can capture these four stones. So I'd say that this race to capture, uh, like if we say something like this, at the very worst, it, uh, white better cut here. At the very worst, it's going to be a sec. I think it's, let's see, it's two outside liberties. Yeah, it's going to be a sec either on the top. Um, and black has a, an awkward fight in the center of the board. So this would probably be good for white. Now when he pushes through here, and let's see the game move. Push through. Okay, so in this case, white's already okay. So I guess white has a choice now of playing in on this side, one side or the other, both of them work to a certain degree. So white can play here. This might be just too damaging to the other side though. So this would, white would be able to capture these stones, but um, on this side, white would be getting into trouble. Let's see, maybe even if black just pushes through here. So capturing three stones might not actually be good enough for white. So otherwise, white could play on this side. So white could play here, or white could play here. If white plays here, white's already... No, he's not connected, is it? If white feels that... Okay, white is connected. So white could play here. This way, white pushes through here. This way, white pushes through. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Now, that means black had that move to start with. So I, I, was, I better take back what I just said. Okay. White has to play on that side. <laughs> okay, white has to play on the left side here. Because uh, black can bump against here and capture the white stone. So that was just a an easy miss mistake on my part. And the same goes to black bumping against here. So that would just capture those white stones. So white's going to play on this side. And that exchange on the top has created um, moves like this, which are going to change what happens on the top. So white has a forcing move, generally a forcing move here, and can push through here, and black cannot um, refute that. So like, um, very and like, uh, let's see, like this maybe. It does look a bit dangerous for black. The order of moves here is a bit tricky. Okay, yeah. White's going to win this race to capture. Yeah, it's a bit tricky, isn't it? Okay, yeah, this is like that. I'm not so sure about this one. Maybe this one. Ah, no, it's much better to play this way. Uh, this this looks good for white. Now it looks good for white. Okay, let's see where he played. Okay, that's how it turned out. So white's going to push through on the third line. And we'll see how he tries to capture that black group on the top. I have the feeling that white's going to capture the black group on the top, and black is going to try to squeeze and get something towards the center of the board. JK is here is making some interesting comments.
Hello, Daryl. Daryl. Okay, let's see. So JK is saying, um, since Black started with three stones in the north, so that's what I would call the upper side. Um, and also has to be better on the board because Komi is not on the board. Um, all right, I don't get the. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll take the other question. So I was wondering how good White's position there was given the clean looking box in the upper left. So that is a nice shape that White got there on the upper left. Uh, let's just take another quick look at that before they finish the semi. Um, so it's this position here where White has played an approach towards the big Shimari and then has played an attachment at the star point. Well, this is pretty standard and when White does that, uh, and the latter favors White if Black plays Black plays this one, then the ladder in this variation, it's not a ladder. It's not a ladder because of that white stone on the fifth line. And also, if it even without that, it wouldn't have been a ladder because of the star point in the lower right corner. Uh, so this is generally pretty bad for, for black, just because he has white has two directions from which white can squeeze something like this. And white's gonna get a good position on the outside. So I like this for white. And so it's pretty normal. I think this is the best move for black. If black played a honey on the other side, white would have played a honey against it. And this uh, this variation, uh, white's going to get a fairly good position on the right side. And these two stones on the left, they're not finished off either. So this is really complicated. Um, it's not directly going to happen. It didn't happen in this game, so I, I, maybe I shouldn't go into the 30, 30 move variation. And I do agree with this. I think this is the most reasonable move. And I would suggest for the casual players, good to play like this, just to get a position towards the left side. This would be an even result. But white covered. So covering is also a joseki. And this threatens, is looking at a cut on the third line. And white can play here. So. Um, if black had allowed white to um, to play an Atari on the fourth line, black could have captured those two stones. So, for instance, if black plays here, uh, let's see, probably this way, black can actually capture these stones, um, but it's probably not not really worth it um, because white would be getting a, a strong position on the outside. So. Um, he refrained from going after those stones and instead took the extension towards the side, which is probably bigger. And White got the box shape. It's pretty much settled um, an even result. The black L4 stone would have been better placed at um, M3. Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay, this one. Okay, so white played here and played here. And so the L4 stone is this. So W. Zhang is saying, according to his AI, the black L4 stone would have been better placed at M3 in this fight. But it's not a very strong AI. So, um... AIs that use neural networks are generally pretty strong, but if they're, for instance, in your cell phone or iPhone or whatever, then the CPU is low, so they they can't calculate as much as, um, say, uh, an AI in a computer. Um, but I was actually expecting Black to connect also, so if Black had connected here, Then uh, I did, okay, in this case, white, let's see, white can play away. White's probably going to play here right, in this case. So white is connected like this, or white can uh, play this way, I guess. This would win the race to capture. It might be better to play this way to keep the potential cut at, uh, at J10, J7. Um, and black will play, I think, uh, yeah, this is going to be a Seki at the best for black. 
and white is, does get this cut. So this is still a seki. Even though white played away, it's still a seki. And black has a bad position in the center, right? Um, I don't know if it's better or not. We'll have to see what happens in the game. Um, but I don't like this variation for black. It looks good for white. So he pushed through, and now if white plays away, black can actually capture this. So this is something I almost missed there, but it's actually pretty uh, pretty elementary, pretty obvious that uh, black is winning the race to capture. Just because black filled that liberty at, at L4, so it was a direct threat on the left. And white's going to, yeah, so white did push through. Um, it does look like a tough fight for black. Because white still has some room to go into the corner there. And for the time being, black has to save the three stones. So if black answers here. Question is, how is white going to continue? So, well, actually, when white does that immediately, we have to think of this move also. So, In this case, how is white going to continue? So, and that's what I was sort of unsure about, because, like, if white wanted to be super safe about that, uh, white would push through here first, in which case I'd say it's forcing, and then here. Uh, but when black plays here, that exchange for from uh, white one for black two seems to be filling white's liberties to a certain degree. So, like, when, uh, this is actually filling one of white's liberties. So it's not good in that case, uh, but it's good in the other case, where black extends here. So this would be, if white connects underneath, this would be threatening to capture uh, these these white stones on the right. So this looks bad for white. And so this could happen, and then this would happen, then this would happen. So yeah, maybe white's going to cut here at some point. So something like this actually could potentially happen, in which case black's going to get a good position towards the top. And on the right, this is really dangerous for black because of all those uh, liberties that he's filled. So like for, let's see, for instance, for instance, if black plays here and white plays here, uh, something like this, where white would be capturing these black stones on the right. And if black fights that one, it's probably not going to work so well for black anyway. So this, this kind of fight... Black's going to die in the end. White has enough liberties on the other side. I feel fairly sure about that. So that's that's how that is. I guess it's working. On the other hand, if uh, white plays, if black plays here, and then uh, let's say black defends on this side, and then white can play here. So this would be if white gets to play at eight. That's going to be really great shape in the corner. And black will have to add a stone to the top side to be alive. So black would need another stone maybe here. And then that uh, group would be alive. But I think white's corner is just so so good in this city that I like white better. And black's not really finished the center either. So that's good for black. So you're saying exactly uh, playing these positions yes one bad move and it's instantly game over but of course for players at this level that's pretty generally true okay so if black extends in the other direction so I, I showed you this move and as Finn Economist is saying it is an ugly shape it's an empty triangle in fights like this um, that becomes slightly less relevant. So that's okay. It's okay to play an empty triangle, provided it works. So it's the calculation that's important. So if black plays in the other direction, um, now in order to get away with this this move, white would still need this exchange. So if white was going to do that, white would have played that exchange to start with, maybe. And black, white does have a double hanging connection, or in this case, actually, this works also. So white is connected, and I think white can capture the black move. So this is one way to do it. 
Although if White was planning this variation, White could have done that by playing it two to start with. So the fact that he didn't play at two might indicate that he's thinking of doing this one, which probably wins also. So in this case, Black can connect underneath, but White can extend Liberty towards the corner. And it looks like this is going to be, for the time being, Black has to take away White's eyes. It looks like it's going to be a tough race to capture for Black. If I was playing this, I would be, um, it would be pretty serious reading that I would have to do. And so, yeah, I'd, maybe I'd be a bit more serious about it than I am here. But, you know, it's actually difficult for black to kill the white group um, because of the fact that this is not a forcing move. Black plays here. Um, it's not a forcing move. Black cannot push through the cut. So that means that um, if black plays this without that, it means that white actually has, can make two eyes. So like this, for instance, maybe please. White can actually make two eyes in a, a variation like this. And so it's, it's sort of tough for black to try to kill the white group, even. On the other hand, if black plays from this side, um, looks pretty certain that black's going to lose that group up. So white's going to win this one. All right, so he's paused here. Ezra asked, is that the second time maybe? How are pro training nowadays? Well, uh, the way I pr uh, train... They still go to study groups, so we still have um, study groups and um, people play with each other or discuss the game and stuff like that. Um, but of course, uh, AIs are very reliable in giving uh, positional judgments. So uh, since we have AIs that can give positional judgments, um, it's become easier to study on your own also. So I can study just with my computer, uh, running an AI, um, doing variations that I'm interested in and getting final judgments for so the the uh, the numbers it gives you gives me help me to understand who's who's ahead in a certain position how how uh, comfortable I feel about that <clears throat> well supplied with tea today. A4. Yeah, principles, proverbs work to a certain degree. Actually, some uh, good proverb videos, uh, though I said myself, there's some proverb videos on my channel. So, uh, let's see. I can give you a link to my channel. I mean, maybe you know it already since you're here. But yeah, you can look at the, uh, the playing lists and... Uh, That's my YouTube channel, so I'll, I'll give it to the people on Twitch also, just in case you want to come to YouTube and watch. Uh, I have hundreds of videos there, and some of them are um, what I call uh, Go Proverbs, and they're some pretty basic videos about Go, so you, um, just about anyone can learn, enjoy them, I think. Okay, so I'm expecting that white's going to capture those black stones on the top. Unless black goes for this variation. Um, the trade is good for white too. So I, I like the trade too. So in this variation, 
it would be a trade. And white would, uh, let's see, so this is just, it's just not working. So black connects. So it's, it's just not, what black cannot push through and cut, and it's going to lose the whole group anyway. So in order to, for one to work, black would have to push through here. So it's this relationship, something like this. This trade is really good for white. It's working for white. Even black's position on the right is not so secure. And of course, the left half of the center, um, not secure either. I think this is okay for one. A big corner. Um, just about everything I look at, I, I like it for white. So, in that case, if black's not going to do that, then it means he's going to lose that group though. So, I think this is okay for white. Yes, definitely subscribe to my channel. It's a lot of good stuff there. Um, videos. Um, some The live streams, of course, stay at my channel, so you can still look at the live streams. Okay, so uh, just to uh, talk about the tournament itself, it's a, this is the final game of a best of three final match between Shin Jin So and Gu Ji Hao. And it happens I had the colors right, so Shin Jin So is white in this in this game. And it's called the Ku uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, Lanka Cup. And so they they have a building there. Um, Lanka is one of the names of Go, and it is the the rotten wood, wood axe, the axe handle um, of a woodcutter who uh, watched a game uh, played by two Either they're sages or spirits um, in the in the wood. They're playing a the game. And as he watches it, a uh, hundred years or hundreds of years pass. And uh, when he finally stops watching and finds that the handle of his axe is rotten because it was wooden, um, and he goes back to his town, and everyone he knew um, had passed away long ago, and all that. So something like. At least a hundred years or hundreds of years had passed, so it's a story that's supposed to give the idea that Go is a very absorbing game and people can enjoy watching it. Uh, I guess uh, I think there's a similar fable about chess, so it, it's basically it's the same story, and it's a different game depending on what country you come from. Uh, Pro Go Pro Go Barukwechi podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you for your donation. Exactly. Well, like it, it was like he was in a special um, environment, I guess. These stories don't have to be that logical. Right. Well, Ezra, I don't know about that. Asking about uh, is Go going to become like other sports? I don't actually know how, to what extent chess has become like that with the diet and routine stuff. Um, I think there's already, there's always been some of that in Go, although it was more um, Asian common knowledge kind of stuff that people were doing. And people generally don't go for the drugs. Like, I think that... Um, I wouldn't go for the drugs just because I want to stay uh, as healthy as possible. I don't really trust doing stuff with my body. Keeping healthy and um, fit is definitely a part of it for, for these players. Oh. Thank, thanks, Stefan. That that was uh, what I what I should have been saying. The immortals created the time bubble. Yeah. Okay, so I don't really see how this is working for black. So, for instance, if we say that black just wants to get a strong position on the outside, 
that would be, for instance, you would connect here. And I guess white would add a stone here. Finishing that off. Uh, that's a pretty, it's a good territory white got on the top. So that's, let's see. That's more than 40 points. So um, it's 40 points versus black's position on the right side. So it's con conceivably a big moyo that black has there. But black doesn't really have anything else. So white has, uh, it's actually more than 40 points, I think. Yeah, close to 40, well, a bit more than 40 points. And then that's something like 15 points now on the lower right corner. Some territory on the left side there. Let's say white is something like 60 points. Black really needs that territory there. So in order to make it a territory, black really needs a stone on the fourth line, probably. It doesn't seem to be enough. So uh, for human players, this is actually... Is still challenging for white because white's going to be fighting maybe in the center in an area that's dominated by black. So it requires not only calculation, but it requires a good um, judgment of how much ter how the territory is doing. So like a choice between uh, sort of just chilling away from the sides with moves like this, or actually just jumping in to, to erase the whole center. Um, it's a difficult a choice that requires both calculation of the fighting as well as a uh, calculation of the score, how the territory is going. Uh, well, the, ch the questions help me, Ezra, so uh, please feel free to ask as many questions as you want. So I think I would prefer to play with white in this variation where white has captured the top side. So that's one, one of the ways that I, was, I would say black could continue. If black wants to continue on the top side, Again, I don't really see Black winning the race to capture. So I guess I would, uh, again, I would make this trade variation. But yeah, I just like this corner so much for White. So it's pretty much a corner. Uh, White might eventually be adding a stone to it. So after this, I think White's going to play here. There is some Aji here. But yeah, to make it work, black would have a would need a more solid shape on the right side. So when it's like this, it doesn't really look like black has an attack going here. So black really needed a stone somewhere in the vicinity of 18 in order to make this um, this stuff in the corner uh, be functioning very well. So that's how I see it. It looks good for white. What if black played in four? YOLO time law. <laughs> what if black played? Yes, exactly. What if black played in four? That's that's the question here. And that's the variation I was just showing. Okay, counting TLS is asking. Um, is it a good tactic of using time pressure early in the game and a complex, complex position like this just to try to throw off the opponent? So, and so he's saying that because Gu was using very little time before. Um, so there's some logic in that, that it, um, you can play quickly to put pressure on your opponent early in the game. And a game like this, they have two hours apiece. So, um, for Korea or China, that's actually, uh, they're pretty comfortable playing with one hour piece also. So two hours is not necessarily a very short time limit, but they will need time later in the game also. So it's a valid idea, but um, the, the main reason I would say that Gu is playing quickly is because um, in the first 30 moves or so, he was probably in a variation that he had prepared. So when the actual fight started here and stones were in danger of being captured as they are, I'm not so, um, there was a certain point, maybe I would, my guess would be that, um, when white played this move at L5, 
that's that's L5, yeah. Um, when maybe this is about when um, Guli started to be outside of his preparation. So this this might have been the move that um, changed that. But up to this point, uh, the previous moves, I would say it's quite possible that Black had researched the opening to that point where he had the moves prepared. So uh, that would be a good reason for him to be playing quickly. And if you can do that, it does, to a certain extent, put pressure on your point, time pressure. And at this point, like... The opening usually is not going to be decisive. So if you can play a good opening quickly, it is definitely an advantage. It's worth it. Um, rather than spending a lot of time and not necessarily playing a better opening, that's that can be a waste of time, waste of your stamina as well as you know, the time is valuable too. So I um, I think in general it's a good idea to be playing quickly. But of course, in order to play quickly and not make mistakes, you have to be doing a lot of research. Uh, day to day. That's very important. And these players are doing that. So they have uh, some good general knowledge of the local positions and even in these fighting variations in the top right and the top left uh, they have seen similar stuff happening. So they have variations at the very least they have variations that worked in a different board position. Uh, but at some point, it doesn't match the exact board position that they have right now, and it makes, and that's where they make the mistakes sometimes. Okay, it looks like yeah, black. Oh, I actually showed this variation in the diagram. So this is like if black is not going to try to save the group. So this was, this was the variation where black tries to save the group, and I like this one for white. Uh, let's see. So, and otherwise, if black plays here, uh, this point and this point are Mi. So I think white's going to win the race to capture in this case. So that's good for white. And so if black is going to play for the outside, so yeah, if black is going to try to live, it was this one. But in the game, he chose to play to make some thickness on the outside. Strong position on the outside to build the right side. So I think this um, is good for white, but uh, white has to be really careful about how he, like, maybe white's going to try to live on the right side, and uh, that could be dangerous. Um, or, or like, I would tend to want to defend the corner first. I don't know if this is the best move, though. This is how I would tend to want to play. Just because invading at the 3-3 three, three point was a kind of a threat there. So it's a lot of territory. Uh, I think this is has to be good for white. Um, but the rest of the game is going to be played in the right side and the center in areas dominated by black. So uh, it could be that uh, that will make it dangerous for white too. So like a, if you have a computer play this out, it will win with seeming ease, but it's a bit more difficult for human players. Okay, YOLO time lol is saying, what about attacking the three black stones on the bottom left corner? Those three black stones are actually, the reason that Joseki is thought to be good for black is that they are actually very resilient. So those three black stones are very difficult for white to attack just because of the fact that uh, I can use this diagram to show that, I guess. Um, even if white starts with some kind of a pincer, black at any time can push along the fourth line. Pushing along the fourth line, allowing your opponent to be playing on the third line, the loss is relatively small. So this is it's easy for black to be playing towards the center and improving this black group without giving too much away on the on the left side. So in a variation like this, actually white's pincer stone at one is the stone that could get potentially into trouble. And there's also some space in the corner where black can make an eye there. Uh, this is usually not going to be forcing, so stuff like this. It's just that black has some space in the corner, some space on the side, and easy to move out. Makes it really difficult for those stones to be 
coming under attack. I think that's one of the reasons that AIs tend to give Black a good score when Black has played with Joseph and Aurora. It's just a very strong group, which can be used to build a moyo, or it can be used, um, and it doesn't get into trouble. It's isolated. Okay, so White did jump in the corner. White's maintaining a, a pretty big advantage in territory, and Black is making this big area. So Black's got a moyo, starting with the right side, center and lower side there's a lot of places where white could invade a lot of points to invade um i would probably be thinking of something towards the center just to um just to race this this general area if you can see the pointer i'm i'm sort of circling around in the center this whole area in the center um my idea would be that if I could erase this area without getting into too much trouble, and then so in some cases I would be able to. So let's see, where shall I play? Uh, so I play somewhere around here. Uh, I just don't know. Like it's, it's there's so much space here. There's, I feel that um, there's no way I could calculate, and I don't think players even at the level. Uh, the world championship level or calculating a position like this. So you have to sort of rely on your feeling. And so like if eventually black surrounds the ro the right side, even at even some like on the seventh line like this, white can eventually be playing moves like this, reducing from the corner. So that would be that would probably be my game plan to just keeping a healthy corner there. Now it's close to twenty points. White well, had more than 40 points on the top side. Has a territory on the left. And so that general idea. So like um, I might play a bit more from the top than this kind of stuff. So ideally thinking of it something like that. And erasing the rest. So erasing from the center um, and allowing black to surround the right side. It looks like a winning variation for white. So I would be thinking of that but white could also think of like just invading here, for instance. Sorry, I was trying to get to the third line. Um, I'm not sure black could kill this group, but of course, you know, if black could kill this group, it would end the game. So this would be a bit adventurous, uh, dangerous, you might say. Uh, but it looks like it's one of the options for white. I, I think white could try this. I would be a bit afraid to do that, so I, that's why I was suggesting uh, some. Uh, sorry, here I was suggesting this one. Um, somewhere in the center, might be played. Um, this is a bit too far from the center, I think, and I, I think if Black can get the right side and expand it into the center, that might be big enough to make it a close game. So I, I my first idea would be to reduce the center, and I think it's good for what. Okay, back to the game. Let's see if... Yeah, it looks like I'm caught up. Okay. So that wasn't the move that I had suggested. It's fairly close. Again, I think it's... Well, it's not really attached to any of those stones against the black wall. But um, this stone here at, uh, let's see, it's L9. Sometimes this stone can sort of participate. So, for instance, um, in a shape like this, you can see it's sort of working together with the white stones to make an eye-like shape. So... That stone at L9 is sort of significant. It does um, have something to do with a shape that white can form in the center of the board here. But not necessarily a, a, a group that white, like if black played here, uh, white must might just uh, sacrifice it. It's not as if white's going to be that keen on saving those two stones if they don't have anything to do with the eyes. At least it's not necessary.
so white's strategy here is to allow black to surround the right side and yeah i think the point is that eventually like white will probably leave it for the time being but eventually we'll get to this point and compared to black playing that end game it's a big difference it's something like 10 points and um, add security to the corner and so this end game is big enough that it's it's sort of a good idea for white to allow black to get the right side because if white had been thinking of invading the right side then that would imply uh black would be doing something like that to stop white from connecting underneath so it would imply stuff like this and some bad stuff would be happening to the corner so like in this case um the corner would be squeeze it would be reduced a lot so it'd be a lot smaller and it would be an exciting fight on the right side i i think white could have done that but it would be more dangerous i sort of like white's choice to reduce the center and he's not reducing the lower side because if black goes for the lower side uh so a variation somewhat like this then um then eventually like if white gets to this point it's, it's all gonna go away so like maybe here in this case so it's not really big until black covers at m m17 here and so it's that's the problem with black trying to surround territory on the lower side it's missing an important stone at m17 so sometimes white can get to that first and then all of black's moves as far as territory is concerned they would have been pointless so yes okay uh w zang is saying oh uh, he's giving us the ai information here saying that xinjing so has a lead but still has to play really well to win i agree with that definitely uh like these positions in the center um very subtly difficult now it um you can play in a way that does not uh, lead to collapse but you could still lose the game without really noticing it's very dip very difficult to choose the right shapes in the center here because everything that white's going to be facing everything that we come up with here um it's not going to be shapes that we actually recognize from our experience because most of our experiences are in side fights on the side corners and we just sort of instinct we intuitively know the shapes in the sides and the corners just because we have a huge amount of experience in the same position so like we can look at the top right corner that that shape there where black can kick it uh kick at the p3 point or white can slide at the q2 point stuff like that so um we just know that because we've um experienced those exactly the same shapes um so many times in our actual games and we know that like for instance in the lower right corner sometimes this is a good shape for black um looking to uh, clamp here sometimes and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't we sort of have a feeling for when and when it does not uh, and when it does work so there's these shapes that we're familiar with we're familiar with the josek in the lower lower left um, but we're not familiar with what's happening here in the center. We've never had this shape where there's the, those two white stones sticking out from the black wall like that. It's a unique shape, pretty much. So, so that's what happens when you get into a fight in the center of the board, because it's less connected to the openings and the, uh, the josekis that we play. And so it's really difficult, because the players are facing uh, something that they're seeing for the first time. So that's why fighting in the center is much more challenging and it's you might say it's possible for even players like these two to make mistakes in the center of the board. Okay, so W Zhang was giving us the AI information that um, yeah he has a lead. White has a lead, but had to play really has to play really well to win. So I agree with that. And he also says that AI was suggesting M seventeen. So that's covering on the side. Uh, so that would actually be um, human players would think of that too. 
So the idea here is just the um, opposite of this one. This would be uh, a natural way to continue attacking the center. So this would be um, this would be another option. So in this case, so like attacking like this, um, it's not as if White's going to die there. Uh, it would be very important. Like this is the move that can the one stone that Black needs whatever. So in this case. If white gets to play here, black would be able to black would have to be able to kill the white group in the center. Otherwise, this would not be working. Uh, it's that it's that big a move that for this would entirely ruin uh, any hopes that black would have of catching up in ter territory. So in some cases, this would be a game a decisive move for white. It would be a game changing move. So black has to be very conscious. Uh, the fact that at any point he has to be worried about white playing here and sort of undermining um, any of the value that black was trying to get with one. Uh, but of course, if black can capture these white stones in the center, then it's going to work. So it, it depends on the calculation of whether or not black can do that. A peep against the bottom left black group is probably not forcing at any time. Okay, so that was Ezra asking about a peep against the bottom left black group. So like I was have been saying, this black group in the lower left corner is pretty resilient. So even if white peeps here, I sort of doubt that um let's so so let's have black um W Zhang was saying that black is gonna cover on the fruit on the third line here, according to his computer. So let's say black plays here and white peeps here. Black's not going to answer that. Uh, I very much doubt that black's going to answer that. If anything, black's going to start pushing on the fifth line here. Uh, just back, uh, sorry, it just backfires when white does that. That's black gets to cut here. So that's already bad on the other side. Or black could just play a hunt. It's already um, really bad on the other side. Or black could cut and uh, and jump out. So. The fact that black got that cut 11 is changing uh, white's strength on the left side. And this black's going to get a lot more pushing moves here. And it just wasn't worth it for white to spend that that move, the tempo, if I say if I could use the chess, chess word. Okay, I didn't get that one. So he played from a completely different side. Um, looks like he's really serious about the attack here, because... This move, it's not from a direction where black has hope of making territory. So that side of the board is already erased the, by the white stone at C13, uh, C13 here. So this, the, yeah, I'm pointing at it. This white stone is already erasing all of black's potential on the left. So um, I, I say all of its, black can get some territory there, but it's going to be really small. Uh, because white has jumped out at C, um, C13. So there's, usually when you attack a group, um, you have the idea that you're going to chase it, and you're going to get some territory in, in the turn. So that's not, that's not what black is doing here. Um, so usually, like, professionals would say that you, you don't attack this one. So it's a, a pretty extreme attack. And you see, he's pushing white towards the bottom side, which was an area where maybe black was hoping to surround territory. So like the comparison, I guess it was this one. I think if he had played here, actually, now that I think of it, he, white was going to play here. And it was the idea that black would end up giving white this point, and it would be difficult to surround that territory. Or if black played here, white would play here and so he's, yeah, very, very aggressive, sort of going for the kill here. It is conceivable that he could get the bottom side and the right side to make it a relatively close game. But just remember, white has more than 40 points on the top side, about 15 points in the lower right corner, and some territory in the lower left also. So black needs, um, black needs close... Uh, more than 65 points. Black needs more than 65 points to win the game. 
and he doesn't really have any territory yet. So I would be a bit worried. The L12 move. Okay, um, the L12 move maybe means the K12 move. The I-12 move. Okay, the I-12 move, yes. I don't understand it either, so I, I don't think it's a good move. So that was Finn Economist saying he doesn't understand Black's move. Um, so yes. So that's what I was basically saying. So uh, usually uh, usually when attacking, you don't immediately go for the kill, but you're trying to get some territory uh, in return for chasing the opponent's move. But this is chasing it inside Black's... The game move was chasing it inside White's, Black's area. So usually this doesn't work. But yeah, usually. We'll see how it turns out. Black will have to be attacking very actively. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, in the chat, uh, this... The lower case I works a lot better because I can I can be sure it's not now. I'd say if white uh, ends up with a kind of a connected shape um, moving into black's areas, I think it's gonna be a win for white. So, like, I would be thinking of a very strong move at this point. Let's see what happens if Black plays a hunter on this side, inside. So, let's see the ladder. The ladder favors Black. So, if White cuts here and Black plays, um, well, let's have Black play this way, just to get a good position on the bottom side. Um, and the ladder favors Black. So, that was working. And the net is probably not going to not going to work. So that wasn't working. So um, Black can escape there. And in this case, Black would be getting a lot out of it. So Black would be capturing these stones. If White cannot capture in a ladder, uh, this would be giving Black a big territory. So like if Black gets to play this one too, you can see a fairly large territory shaping up. So this would be maybe a success for Black. Uh, otherwise, Black could push through this way. It would be a bit less secure towards the bottom side, but a bit better towards the left. So maybe this way. White answers here. So this ladder favors black too. And maybe a fight somewhat like this. So and black will push through here. And black's getting the right side in this case. So maybe, maybe, maybe something like this. So the other option would be to play on this side. So usually this is how you would attack, but uh, you have to remember that black sort of, in this case, black is attacking from the wrong side because all of the strength that black is building here doesn't really have any space to make into territory. And so this is basically from the wrong side. So it's, as far as shape is concerned, this is how you usually attack this white group. But I think black has to try something a bit more strong or drastic. J13. Yeah, yes. So yeah, the computer agrees with me, I suppose. Because I think W Jang is giving me um, an AI uh, commentary. Yes, and I think I, I sort of answered Finn Economist's question also when he says he's asking if I can think of a justification for Black playing this way. Um, the potential justification would be a very strong attack such as this, where Black is relying on the fact that all of the ladders favor Black and is getting to cut off a part of the white group. This is how it would... Um, because this is how I think it could possibly work for them.
One Dragon is saying that Xing doesn't seem scared. Well, Xing is generally really good at handling these groups, so he wouldn't be scared. Um, but this is still a point in the game where if Black, okay, uh, playing this, this strong variation, if Black does get a very strong attack and gets to cut off half of the group, uh, we could be, in the end, we could be thinking about territory once more. So it's, it's not as if not being able to kill it is always a losing scenario. So just to take another look at that variation. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I sort of think White's going to do this one. Uh, Black also had this one, which would be a different story altogether. But I sort of like this for Black, where Black is... Or White could connect here, actually. In which case, it would be something... This, the ladder... That ladder still doesn't... Yeah, well, Black probably needs to answer on this side. And so, yeah, there could be a potential problem for Black in this version, actually. This looks much more disturbing for Black. Maybe just like this. I think yes. So white does have to connect at 7 because allowing black to push through there. Um, this was probably just a good variation for black. I, I, I sort of like this for black. It's just so so great there. Unless white can capture something, but when all of the ladders favor black, like even if white curls around here, um, the ladder favors black, right? So, and this one isn't going to work either. Um, it's just that it's so extreme on the bottom side now. And this side, it doesn't really work either. Black's going to capture these stumps. Maybe here. And yeah, it's probably not good enough for white. At some point in this variation, black gets to cut and extend. Here. So this side is going to get into trouble too. Yeah. So yeah, fighting it directly is really dangerous for white. And allowing black to push through at 8 is probably just too much. So, uh, so yeah, so white should probably go for this variation. Let's see if they've played any moves. Oh, he hasn't played any. So this is the final, this is probably going to be a decisive fight, although it's still fairly early in the game. Wow, that way. So that's, um, okay. That's a completely different story. Yes, and as I said, the latter favors black. Um, we've already taken a quick look at this variation. Okay, the question is, is black going to push through once, or is he going to simply connect? So, there is an argument to say that it's better for black to push through here, so that black can fill the liberties of the two white stones in the center. But white's not necessarily going to play an Atari from that side, so white would be more in the mood to be um, playing from this side, or from this side, just leaving that. I sort of lean towards it. I don't think black actually has to fill the liberties of the white two stones. So I would lean towards this move, which is better shaped towards the bottom side. So in this case, uh, black has a much more solid bottom side when something like this happens. Oh, but he pushed through. Okay. Okay, only unknown is saying could black have been aiming at turning something on the left into hard centered expanding. So no, the only really important um, move on the left would be this one. And this one, white's always going to answer. So like, um, it's a bit far away to be thinking of in this position. I don't think it's. I don't think we can calculate a variation where that's going to have a direct impact on the white group in the center. 
So that's, I think that's, even with the, these players, I think that's beyond them uh, at this stage. It would be a huge amount of moves and variations to, to get to that kind of move. If Black can get a push here and it's um, forcing towards the center, like if, if Black could get these two moves, um, that would be a game-changing, a big difference. It would be really big. So in most cases, this would win the game for Black. But it's um, that move being forcing towards the center is it's not something that I see happening in the near future. The peep was never sent to, sent to. So yes, Ezra is saying the peep would have helped with the ladder at this point. That peep was never sent to. So yeah, it's it's just a wish they might have. Okay, so uh, just to clarify, there's a lot of white stones that are cut off. And there's no way that white is going to capture this black stone. Like if white captured this stone, it would be game over. And all of the ladders favor black. Um, there's no way white's going to capture this. There's no net or anything. So first of all, okay, I think actually Yinku is asking the question. So... When you look at a position like this, how do you try and find ideas to evaluate Sabaki for white? So uh, that's what I was going to start on. You have to um, sort of rate the groups. So when you know that this white, these two white stones and these two white stones, in any realistic scenario, they're not going to link up uh, because that would be uh, just perfect for white. But Black's probably not, you have to assume Black's not going to allow that to happen. Unless Black gets something outstanding in return. So if we assume they're never going to be linked up, um, it's going to be difficult for White to save everything. So we have to choose what White's priorities are. And I'd say in this case it's pretty, pretty clear that the stones on the right here are the stones that White is always going to save. So in some cases White can sacrifice the two stones on the so let's see. Um, it's a question of what, what the correct shape is here. So is the correct shape here? Or is it um, like with computers, do you see these kind of strange shapes? Mm. And let's just do it uh, something a bit more human. So something like this, something like this. Let's say that uh, we have a shape like this where black has ended up paying a lot of uh, on both sides to capture. This is the kind of variation where it's sort of conceivable that white can get away with sacrificing the two stones on the left if white is uh, getting enough towards, the, well, in the other areas of the board. So this would be making use of the 40 so points that white has on the top and close to 20 points white has in the lower right corner. And now white has maybe a bit more than 10 points on the left side. So this would probably be a win for white. So it would be enough way territory for white. Uh, but I, I sort of made it easy for white in, in this variation. So in actual play, it's going to be a bit more difficult. But um, I think it's pretty clear that this is the type of diagram, the type of uh, sequence that white should be trying to head for. Whereas um, and when, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, you didn't see it. Okay, good. So, whereas if white plays from the other side and tries to save these stones, then the right side is probably going to be too big. So. Okay, uh, Joe is asking, why do we call it the game of Go and not the game of Ego? And we can call it uh, both of those. There's a number of names for Go. Um, and the Go part is in Japanese is the character or it is the the meaning meaningful word that is unique to the game go so it's the go part that means go 
And the E part is actually an honorific. So it's a polite way of saying go uh, when you say eagle. Um, or it's actually classifying it, it, the character means to surround. So it's the surround, surrounding game. Um, and so the E part is actually a part of the Chinese thing because Wei Qi, the Qi part, can be used for different games. So the Wei Qi, the Wei is the same character as the E in Japanese, but um, they're saying they're calling it basically the surrounding game. Chinese, the Chinese word Wei Qi. And the Japanese name, the Go part in itself is. Um, is unique to the game go and so it's a different name and it doesn't necessarily need it I, I maybe i was not being precise when i called it an honorific although it is the more polite way of saying go it's not the necessary part of the word yeah um so here's tls introducing the the chinese word wei qi and the qi part um can be a suffix for just about any board game. So it can be a Chinese, uh, it can be a chess game or something like that. Jap a Chinese or Japanese chess game. I think they probably all use the chi, chi word. And they have a, uh, something on the left, which is characteristic of the particular board game. Yes, so Yinku is coming back to the previous discussion about um, choosing which side is your priority and yes so I think that the idea is that you when you have a position like this where it looks like you're never going to be able to save everything you choose which one you want to save and then you look for um, a diagram like the one I was showing you where you can this would be your ideal answer uh, where you're, you're looking for getting a certain degree of profit back uh, while while you sacrifice yeah I, I did that so like uh, you would you would say that if you get something like this, maybe white has gotten enough to call this a, a winning variation. So you you sort of calculate with this, and white would be looking at the overall position and try to make a positional judgment to say that this is going to be good enough for white. Oh, a, a Japanese biography. There, there's an English biography of me somewhere. Um, in even Wikipedia, I think they have a kind of a, a page for me. Although the picture is, I think the picture is hideous, but they have a page for me. Okay, yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to look for my English biography right now. H14, right, yeah, so uh, Yolo time Lao saying, um, suggesting white could su sacrifice the stones on the right. I say not not at this point. Like if, if white was getting something significant in return, there are some cases, but uh, right now those stones on the right are the important group. So white played this move. Um, this might be a good shape, actually. So black has to do something with this cutting stone because if black doesn't, if yes, if black doesn't do it, so that, that just means white's going to capture this stone, or well, maybe maybe something more like this. White does have to be careful. So this would probably be out of the question. Um, I think black has to find something local. So it would be either this move. Or this. Of course, with a player like Xin Jin, so you sometimes see him try to save both sides. The, uh, sometimes it's a bit greedy. Uh, well, he can make it work. So uh, I guess maybe not greedy is the maybe not the right word, but he is a very strong uh, fighter. So maybe he's not going to give up the two stones on the left so easily in this variation. So like if black plays here and white plays here, this would be a position where white's trying to devalue the lower side as well as save the top side. So for instance, 
and a variation like this, uh, white would be trying to sacrifice those two stones, maybe on an even smaller, uh, well, white would be trying to make it even more difficult for black. Although I think there's a lot of uh, potential problems with that. A weakness here. So this would be a bit tricky. Um, it would be the less simple way to play. Okay, but he, he's sort of going in this direction, isn't he? That just says I'm a professional role player and that's my name on the right. So that was Ezra Kayam giving my Japanese name. Oh, might as well show it to the people on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my Japanese name. So the two characters on the left say I'm a professional. Um, this could actually be a... Uh, uh, that's an example of the character for... the In Weichi, that's the, the right side of Weichi, the Japanese form of that character. So it's uh, the word chi in Chinese, and it's pronounced ki in Japanese. So that's pronounced kishi, which means I'm a professional. And then it has Michael Red, my name in Japanese phonetics. Or it's an approximation of my name. Yes, I'm um, in the comments asked about, asked about Twitch. I am broadcasting on Twitch also. So there's some people watching me on Twitch. I can, yeah, in your, if you're interested, I can give my Twitch. I don't do so much apart from the, um, the live broadcasts. Um, but I do, I do um, have the lives on Twitch also. If anyone wants to double up there, I can give you my address. So that's my page on Twitch. Okay, so as far as um, shape was concerned, that was really good for white. You can see white forced black into bad shape in the local position. Uh, but the fact that white played a hane from the left, it means that white's, um, white's thinking of saving the stones on the left also. So I get the feeling that white's um, at least play, uh, toying with the idea of saving everything, which would be um, maybe more decisive. Okay, H12. H12 is, oh, okay, not direct, why playing H12 and then the empty triangle instead of not directly H11? So that's actually a fairly valid point. Um, it's because, okay, my, okay, there's some nuances here. My gut feeling is that it's going to be really tough for white to say both the left and the right. So, um, it's what I was saying when I said that when white plays the honey from the left, it sort of indicates that though that white is going to try something on the left also. While white saves the stones on the right, white's going to try to get some kind of profit on the left. Otherwise, the white stone at, um, at K, no, it's G, isn't it? G12, that white, this white stone at G12 um, is in danger of being inside the black territory. So like, if we say something like, okay, yeah, that's a completely different previous. So if we say something like this, uh, white would be very safe in the center, and then we said that black's just going to capture here, you can see that that stone that white played, it ends up inside the black territory. So it's increasing black's territory, not necessarily very good. So that sort of indicates that white's plan here, he's going to try to save everything, maybe. Um... So, going back a few stones, what I'm trying to say here is if black 
plays here, uh, it becomes less necessary for white to do that because it's relatively easy for white to make good shape for white in the center and sacrifice these stuff. So in this case, uh, white would be doing stuff like this. This is probably the kind of variation where white's going to have enough territory. Um, and a fairly good, relatively good shape in the center. So um, as far as shape is concerned, they're both bad shape. You can see black has a it's kind of an empty triangle shape in this case also. So they're both bad shape. But in the game, black chose bad shape in a way uh, that made white's liability bet more. So white, white has to try to save everything to a certain degree. He, you see he's still playing on the right side. So the question is, maybe white's stone at G12 is going to end up being what we call Moshkomi. It's going to be inside black's territory. So that's why I like black pushing first. And then curling around, even though it's an empty triangle. When you're attacking, empty triangles can be played. It's not as if they're always bad moves. Okay, white has a, a, a lot of very loosely connected stones. For the time being, he has to deal with that cut at its L, um, L12. So... All of the moves he's been playing um, just now, they would be really bad if he allowed Black to cut those three stones off. So he probably has to do something about that cut at L12. Okay. He's not doing it the easy way. But that's, I, I guess that's sort of characteristic of, uh, of Shin Jin So. Okay, about the time. It looks like uh, Guzi, let's see, is that match? They've been playing uh, about two and a half hours now, two hours and 20 minutes. And it looks like um, Guji has used about one hour of his time, so he has one hour left. And uh, it looks like Shinjin So has used closer, more like an hour and 20 minutes of his time, so he has 40 minutes left, approximately. So um, the clocks that I have here are just, uh, uh, they show, um, they depend on how quickly the operator. Put the to put the moves in to this particular server so they're working in that way not always exactly precise but they're close enough I think. okay w zang is saying that his ai tries to find these variations for white where it can settle peacefully and it gives black a huge lower side and ends the end game with a, something like a two-point lead. So I see a lot of variations like that myself when I'm researching the data. And for humans, it's much more difficult to pull that off. And the two-point win is a much more dangerous end game for human players than it seems to be for, for computers. Or at least when they evaluate the position, they seem much more confident. So it still could become very close. It could become a very close game. Why N12 here over M11? N12, I suggested N12, M11. M11 is a shape too. So 
So that was um, Ying Ku asking about the way I was suggesting white might um, connect. So I was suggesting this. And this would work. This, this is actually a more solid connection. It's a more secure connection. And if black cuts, white can capture like this. It's kind of a little ladder there. That's, that's a shape. Um, not necessarily bad. Okay. And Daniel Briggs is showing us the Go character. That's a variant of Chi. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so the top of the character, um, he's comparing it with the top right part on the right thing. So that, that, that part was moved on top of the character for stone. Uh, and they got rid of the wood. Yes. Okay, Joe is asking, is it more common for games between professionals to end by more than 10 point difference? Answers to that is no. Um, they pretty mostly we get uh, fairly close. So it's, um, the, it's just that in this kind of position, um, it's impossible to calculate that two point difference. Okay, white peeped. So this is potentially forcing. So I think that the idea is that if black cuts. Okay, so if black cuts here, okay, I'm getting confused. Okay, I'll do my, uh, if black cuts here, so white's not quite ready to capture these two black stones, because black can escape in this direction, uh, but the peep has created this cut here, which is not only threatening black on the right, there's also a threat here, so, um, so this here could be very dangerous for black. Like, this is just a crash for black. It's already very, very bad. And of course, white's threatening on this side too. So, like, something like this would probably be very dangerous for black. Um, and this is just one of the ways white can go about doing it. But you can see how it's getting into, black is getting into trouble here. So, with the cut there, uh, the bottom line is white can use the cut at 6 and 8 to deal with black's cut at, at 1. So it's serving as a, a very active way for white to connect, to defend the cut at L12. Okay, SD, 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 F, S, D, F, okay. So this person is asking, what can a Q player gain from watching this fighting reading game? You just have to, in the fight, you just have to follow each move and try to read uh, one or two moves. Um, you don't actually have to try to calculate like a pro, but reading just um, reading one move ahead is good enough for most players. And if you can find the right move, like if you can uh, guess what your opponent is going to do, and if you can find a good reply to it, then you're already ahead of the game. So that's um, that's actually good enough to, to play the best moves. If you have uh, the correct assumption of what your opponent is going to do, and you have a good answer to it, then you're then you're safe. You're okay. You're ahead of your opponent. And so that's all the re reading you need. And I think if you're watching a game like this. Uh, like you, uh, if you can, if you want to go deep and try to calculate something, this is the kind of attack that you you want to check out just to make sure. Um, but basically, you just have to try to find, try to guess what where the next move is going to be, and that that's how you enjoy it. That's how you learn from it. And if you want to really study the game. Then you would probably learn most from the early parts of the game um, where you could actually try to get into the same opening. So, like the first few moves, uh, you, you find something you like, uh, then you can you can try to play it in your own games. So that would be just the, the way they set up the opening. 
uh, as in as in the opening moves like this. So like the, just this way of Black setting up the game uh, with the idea that he's going to play a pincer when White plays a Kakari. Um, it's just about all you need. Get stronger. If you want to study it more, you can always start with this. And you don't, even with just the six moves, six, seven moves here, you don't know that this is what, what it's going to be like because your opponent can still play different moves. But it's a lot more likely to happen than, than this board position, right? Okay, so if black pushes through and cuts at M13. So that was a valid question. Um, it fixes white's other cut. So Michael MZX is asking, could black push and cut at M13? And I bet that's this move. So let's put it on the board. Um, so that is a very natural reaction to white's jump there, which is not connected to the stones on the left. So the idea is that it is um, maybe this way. White is going to be able to fix the shape on this side. White might even, this is actually a ladder, so black would have to answer this. Um, if black cuts and extends here, it's going to be a ladder. So white might even push once more. And white's going to get uh, a nice, a good shape in the center of the board. So that's that's the idea here. And W Zang is saying N12 is the top response for black. And that's this move, which is a shape move. So I guess white would play here. And black's probably going to push through here. And this would settle black's group on the right without giving black, white so much security towards the center. And if white pushes through and cuts here, black will answer. Uh, let's see, will he answer here maybe? This would be the safe move. Unless he wants to get adventurous. And this looks a bit dangerous. Maybe this one. And white would still have to worry about the cut at L12. So this, uh, that's how potentially this would be working. Yes, the peep is working to reinforce the white play. Okay, uh, YOLO Time Lao is asking if Black uh, Black needs to do something about the white group as a whole. Definitely yes. Um, Black needs to keep the pressure on this white group as much as possible. And however, there is potential still that Black can get some territory on the right side maybe. Um, so for instance, in this variation, if, if Black gets a shape like this, this white stone, the peep here, has increased Black's territory to a certain degree. And that white has lost uh, this end game move that I was talking about earlier. It's not. Uh, it's not going to function very well. Uh, white's reduced to maybe this would be moves like this would be the best you'll say. Um, a less effective end game move from the corner uh, means that if black does get a big area on the right side, it's going to be bigger than it was in previous variations that I was talking about. So black has some potential extra profit here. And we still don't know what's going to happen on this other side of the center, the lower left part of the board. It could be that Black's going to get um, some territory here also. So the combination of these territories, it could still conceivably be good enough for, for Black. D13 is... Okay, 
uh, counting TLS is saying that the, the second choice for black. So the first choice was black one in this diagram. And the second choice was this. This is just going to be a force. It's, it's, uh, uh, and it's not necessarily weird. Um, but it's beyond my ability to calculate it because um, in some cases pushing here would be working for white. In some cases the center would get so heated in the fighting that black pushing here later on it might cease to be forcing. Um, so there's for a human player there'd be a huge amount of calculation to uh, to make this a valid choice. But it's conceivable that it could be important. But there is the fact that in some board positions, uh, so for instance, if black goes, tries to make it large scale, um, as far as shape is concerned, this is sort of working for white. And so this kind of fight is something that, if we just look at the left half of this, it's conceivable. Although for the time being, white has to deal with the right side. So it's not, it's not yet, but maybe later on. So there are some cases where black would be happy to be pushed once. Then. Okay, that's interesting. W Zhang, um, if black plays at N12, so this does look like a shape move. The only response for white is in 11. So um, this is actually sort of, oh, uh, but it is shape. So like uh, if black pushes through and cuts, white's going to play here and here. Uh, well, maybe here. Uh, so that, that was working for white. And so if white plays here and black pulls back, well, obviously this is bad for black. Even if black pulls back, this is getting fairly good shape for white in the center. Or if black plays here, pretty much obliged to cover here, white will actually be able to cut. And here, and this semi-eye in the center, white has three outside liberties, so white's winning that semi. -eye. Looks like even these three black stones, I don't see how they're going to escape, actually. Maybe here. You know they can't escape. Oh, yeah, they can in that case, can't they? Well, this is wild. Well, that didn't escape, actually. It was... So it could be that black's in trouble in this case. So yes, two is a shape move. Uh, I, I wouldn't have thought of that, but that was... Um, w Zhang was giving us the, the AI move, and it looks like it is good shape. So it is a bit crazy, but um, it sort of makes sense, just because it reverts. In some cases, it would revert to this, this diagram, which I had already concluded this is good for white. Uh, looks like he's still thinking about it. Okay, so... Kukulis is asking why black N12 better than M13 and then M12. It's because um, white's whole aim in this thing is to get this, first of all, white needed to get the connection here to get rid of the cut at L12. And in this case, white's getting some extra moves to, to make a, an eye in the center. And white has a potential eye to white, towards the right side. 
So that means that white's going to be able to settle this group. So if black plays on this side, uh, then white would probably probably need something like this to defend the center. And white's starting to get um, eye shape in the center of the board. Or I might even try something a bit more active. Um, so it looks like white's going to be able to settle the group. And that's because um, black 1 and 3 was actually, the whole sequence was giving white a lot of forcing moves to, to make good shit, to make, to make eyes. Okay, uh, that's an interesting question. Ezra Cam is asking, how much deeper can you go with long games like Moimbun? So we're, I think we're talking about the depth of reading out variations. And um, you actually probably do go more deep in the reading. Although, um, yes, uh, they had even more time um, earlier in history. And so there were, were many cases where they were reading very deeply far into the future of the game. So I'd say yes, if you have more time, it's conceivable that you can get deeper reading. But uh, when you say how much deeper, actually that's a tricky question because the quality of reading is not really judged, it can't be judged by the number of moves you've read. Uh, for instance, an extreme example of that is the ladder, which is so easy that even a beginner can learn to read a, a ladder. And so anyone can read it out. You're actually reading uh, maybe close to 100 moves when you read out, uh, when you correctly judge the ladder. And so it's a lot of moves, but they were so simple that just about anyone could read it. And then there are positions where uh, reading one move is suffices. So um, at the top levels, it's actually, it's not the depth of the reading, but it's the width, the, the, um, the number of uh, variations rather than the depth of the variations is often more important. And also the, the quality of the reading is also your the ability to make a correct assessment. So the positional judgment is often very important. So you, you can read a lot of moves, but if you can't judge the, the result you get, it doesn't do any good. So it's a, actually a combination of those things that makes it work. And the number of moves uh, can differ a lot. And, and it can still be very good reading, even if you don't have a lot of moves spread out. Oh, the L12, let's take another look at that. I don't think it's working, but um, that's how white's P pair is functioning to make it difficult for black to cut at L12. So that's Kukulis 100. Um, maybe you missed it, but it's worth going into it again. So white's going to plan Tari here and connect. So for the time being, this is threatening a, a net or a ladder. No, it's not a ladder, it's a net. So this would capture the black stones. So black's going to play here, and white will push through and cut here. And the problem is that uh, that peep was actually fairly effective in the fact that black's in trouble on both sides. So if black plays on this side, um, for instance, this would be a, a very bad collapse for, for black. 
or if black plays on this side. Now I'm not sure what the best move is for white. Like I suggest this is probably just good enough. Although there might be different ways to do it. So like for instance playing here and then here is probably gonna work also. So like in this case, uh, Yeah, but if, yeah, like this would be a forcing move, so this would capture the black group. So this is working. So there's various ways why I can do it, although I, I made it relatively easy by doing it this way. So I, this seems to be working also, um, although they're, I'm not sure it's the best way for white to play. It's probably good enough to capture the black zones on the right. So it's the fact that the, the cut at 6 and 8 is a counterattack that's going to refute Black's cut at one. That's how it works. Okay, Ezra Kayam, thank you for asking about the book. Uh, there's a book um, at this stage. It's taken us a long time, but I have finished all the commentaries for the book about the 60 games of uh, AlphaGo Master against uh, top human pros. And... We'll be working on it. It should be coming up fairly soon, although we don't have a schedule yet. And after that, I should be going on to other ideas, like um, some more AlphaGo games. Yeah, I'm, I'm still interested in doing that. M13 and O13 are obviously bad for black, for black. So you think you can find N12? I wouldn't be surprised. And that's W. Zhang saying that clearly black will not play at M13 or O13. I think I agree with that. One Dragon is asking, do today's AIs beat AlphaGo? And I, I wouldn't, I believe so. Um, as far as the, the strength of the program is concerned, they are getting stronger all the time. So they're improving. Um, and of course, I'm, sh I don't know. Well, I, I, all I know is that the Google supercomputer uh, was extremely powerful. So I don't know exactly um, how the hardware situation is going, but I do know that the, these programs, they are getting stronger all the time. Okay, so it looks like um, Luji Hao is, he's using a lot of time. So he, I think he has a... Uh, remainder of about 40 minutes and Shinjin so seems to have a about half an hour so that seems to work with let's see it seems to work with our time they, they've almost played three hours so far Haha. Ha. Okay, Joe is asking, what are your thoughts on the future of Go when something like ChatGPT is combined with Lila Go AI to try and teach Go? That sounds sort of suspiciously like a general AI. So like um ChatGPT has a completely different program. So if it combined with um well, I, I wouldn't say Leela, I'd say maybe Katago um, or Fine Art, for instance. Like a, if you chose a Chinese program, that would be maybe one of the strongest. Um, once computers can do that, that's, yeah, and chat GPT lights too. It just picks up stuff from the internet, doesn't it? But um, assuming that will get better, I think that once computers start doing multiple things at the same time, 
I'm not a computer engineer, but I would say that's uh, another step closer to general AI. This is getting, uh, with AIs, it, it's always difficult for me to follow because I don't have any really technical knowledge of computer engineering, but yes. Um, yes, I, I think I agree also with Melinda Green that it's not lying because it doesn't have beliefs. Um, it's just, that's the way it's made. So with AIs, they set a task to their system and it's going to um, function in a way that um, that solves the, the task it does the task that it's put to it so for instance AlphaGo uh, Master um, was tasked to win the game um, but it wasn't tasked to always play the correct move in the end game it didn't have to win by a large margin and that really annoyed me because it kept playing these lousy moves in that game because I was winning anyway. And so you don't always know what's going to come out. Um, like if you were talking to a human person, like you would expect uh, some of what you might call common sense. But the computer is just going to do what you tasked it to do. And that's not necessarily what you might have expected if you were not thinking exactly in the way you set it up. Okay, an uh, unexpected move here. So this is, it's a big move, obviously. If black can get the lower side, that's gonna be a fairly big hit. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't the suggested move that people were showing us. Catching it the other side of I-11, uh, that would have had its own issues, I'm sure. Right, well, um, we're still talking about the potential of having a program like ChatGPT trained to teach Go. I think just it would have to be the understanding of the game would have to be uh, integrated into it. And you can't really say that even programs like AlphaGo or Kotago, they don't really understand the game in the way that we understand it. And so... Um, they're not really, even if they could talk to me, I don't think they would be capable of explaining why they do stuff. It's just that it's a better winning percentage.
And so the reason Katago or AlphaGo or whatever AI it is, the reason that system chooses a move is not the reason that I would be feeling comfortable to play that move myself. And so having them talk doesn't really work. They, I think they have to have a different way of getting to that answer that it's not so much of a black box. Right, it doesn't. It does have a. That's what Andrew Bruss seems to be saying here. And they, the AIs that we use to um, research code, they don't really have a a reason. They don't have a why for why they made it smooth. It's just because because they work. Okay, so white looks like white's uh, settling in the center. And so we don't really know how the bottom side is going to turn out. So conceivably, like if we drew a line, an imaginary line around all of those white stones, the three ones there, and we said that this whole area is a black territory, that's probably about 40 points. So that would equal white's territory on top. Might even, black might even get a bit more than white's territory on top, in which case the game would be close enough. It would be not bad for black. On the right side, black still can make some territory. In fact, black probably has to make some territory because we have to remember there's that cut at N N14. There's that cutting point. So if black just leaves it, uh, then eventually he's going to get cut off it. So that would be bad. And uh, playing a move like this is going to be a bit painful. Also, even if White answers it for the time being, that's going to be a forcing move. So it's sort of painful to be forced to play the bamboo joint here. So Black probably has... Oh, wow. Now that, it in itself, it's not going to work. But he's trying to create some kind of a forcing move. So there's a number of ways that it's not going to work. I, I was about to say, actually, uh, I was about to say that I, I thought Black was going to play something on the right side to def to indirectly defend against the cut at N14. So uh, I was going to suggest something like this, for instance. And white's not alive yet in the center. So if black can get some territory on the right side while chasing white and surround the lower side with uh, stones, some so like something like this. So a variation uh, somewhat like this would be an example of it working for black. So black would get close to 40 points on the bottom here, and that would be close to white's territory on the top, and maybe something in the vicinity of 20 points on the right side, and that would be close enough to white's territory here in the lower, re lower right, and then the top left for the bottom left. So it would be an endgame. This would be an example of an endgame that black might have a chance in. So that was that's the general sort of idea or sort of guess that I was having as I watched that. Yeah, and White, White could have answered this from either side, so this way or this way. I don't really... I'm not sure what Black is trying to get, because yeah, it's, it's not as if there's anything serious going to happen to this point. White could have played from the other side too, so if White had played here So this is the tesogy with which white can capture the black group. So it wasn't a, it wasn't even going to be uh, anything. I, yeah, I guess either way it works for white. Uh, 
Okay, uh, our Korean friend um, says my hair looks fancy. It's just short. Excellent. Okay. Oh, yes, in indeed. Thank you, Andrew Gross. Thank you for your suggestion and for your donation. So Andrew Gross just made a suggestion for videos. Playing one side of the opening against Kadawa using pre-AI principles and then, then let Kadawa play both sides. To demonstrate why its opening principles are superior. Right. Pre-AI principles are pretty difficult now. I'm sort of um, partly brainwashed by Kadawa, I think. <laughs> okay, so he was trying to make this a forcing move. And I'm not sure that it's forcing anyone. Okay, Nosferatu 488 asking, could Shin Jin So beat the Alpha Go that played against Lisa? Um, well, using the Google supercomputer, I, well, I think that's the only way it functioned actually. But um, maybe not, but um, with the knowledge he has, or maybe, I don't know really. Um, that alphabet, the, the, what we are calling the we said all version now, um, was not very advanced in its opening when we compare it to the modern AIs. And so people like Shin Jin So um, have studied with AIs to the extent that these modern openings are pretty natural to them. Maybe you would be able to win. But you know, it would depend a lot on the time controls because the shorter the time controls, uh, computers calculate more quickly than humans, so the sort of the time control is more of an advantage, in my opinion, more of an advantage the computer has. So that that would be a factor, um, but he would um, he would have much more of a chance. He would he wouldn't be getting into trouble from the start, in the way that uh, Lisa all was. And yes, Japan is, it's very hot, uh, especially today. It's a hot day today. Oh, really? Stephen K is saying that finally played against AlphaGo and won several of the past games, but lost all the slow games. Well, that's the opposite of what I would expect. Yes, I believe White can tend to. So that's SDS, and the SDSDS person. So Black did manage to connect there, but it's not going to be forcing. So let's see. Um, if Black plays, let's make some diagrams. If Black plays down here, oh, sorry. Uh, White's going to play somewhere else. Uh, I put it there. Yeah, that looks good. So if Black plays here, 
Black cannot save the two stones. And Black cannot win the race to capture. So something like, it's not amounting to anything. If Black plays here, now this is a bit more troublesome. Yes, exactly, Kukulis, 100. It's true that in Japan, the beginning of the summer is always a rainy season. It's a rainy season right now, about to start. It's just the seasonal winds. They're, they bring the clouds uh, right across Japan. So unless the um, changing of the climate is going to change that, right? it's still the case that those seasonal winds bring rain to Japan every year, about this time of year. It makes it very humid. Yeah, I'd, I'd, st I'd say that still it's not working for black. So this is this is the more troublesome variation, maybe. Um, it could be pretty complicated. So like, um, if white connects here, Black could play here. Here. Looks like it could be a kind of a, a core or something. So this would be a core. Or actually, provided white can't get out, black could even choose this one. That would be seven liberties against six. So this is a tesuji that you see sometimes. Could be a close sample. And so there could there could be a little uh, anji there uh, with this. I don't really know if it's oh, sorry with uh, this. I don't know if it's going to be decisive, but it is it is something. So like if white plays here and black plays here, it's still this kind of thing that black would do. And a call, a call of some sort. Q1. Q1, uh, black plays from the outside, and white's going to lose that one. Yeah, it looks like there might be something there, although I'm not sure it's going to be a cooling move. So we'll, we'll, maybe we'll see that in the game. Right. Okay. Daniel Briggs is saying if you have a 45% of winning by about 20 points and a 55% of losing by about one. So actually this, this would be a kind of board that the, the whole fight here would be a kind of a situation where um, there would be a lot of variations. Uh, if I were saying there would be crashes for white and less crashes for black. basically. Um, so there's maybe a higher chance that black would be winning by a large margin while white might be winning by a relatively small margin most of the time. So that's a, that's, that sort of describes that uh, this case. Um, so you could imagine the score estimate 
was sort of off in that way. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's how it uh, how it works, and I think that it it does that a lot. So, um, so that's how it helps to be able to see with um, programs like Katago, you can see this, the score, uh, the winning percentage score, and you can also see the um, for, forecast of how many points that's going to be, which is actually an average of the various results. And having both of those numbers um, makes the information very good. So I think that you really need a combination of both of those. And then you, you're then you're pre pretty much Im immune to falling into the trap of being fooled by these these the weaknesses of the system basically. Okay. Um, so Shinjin, so I think he has about twenty minutes left, and Guji how seems to have about half an hour left in time. They have five sets of uh, one minute for overtime. Thank you, TL, uh, counting TLS, explaining how the AIs work. It's a weight average, he says. Yes, this could easily turn into an endgame. Buck is conceivably getting a lot back out of the attack. He's getting a big, potentially getting a big lower side.
evening, so it seems to have about a quarter of an hour left. So he's using his last time thinking about this. <clears throat> Let's try another. Right. Yes, there is Biyomi. So that's a uh, Finnan economist asking about the time. So there's five uh, sets of one minute. 60 seconds. Okay, let's try another variation here. So there's this. No, no, that didn't work. This doesn't work because white plays here. So this is kind of a key point here. And yes. This is a test of G sometimes. Okay, let's, let's, let's give, white could have played this one. So let's give white that one. So in this case, it's not really working. So in this case, black has gotten an extra liberty and it's just trouble for white. So white can't use that. So it's trouble. So white plays here. It's, it's going to be a co anyway, isn't it? So the idea here is that from the start, With this move, if white fills a liberty, black can jump to get a connected ship. So even if we assume at some point white's played this move, white had to play it before one actually. Black can still play here. And make a point. So this would be a one-step code. Maybe something like a one-step code is going to be the best, best answer. What would black play if white answers in the corner? Okay, so if white answers in the corner, um, black would probably play an attack against the white group. So maybe the same point. White's group in the center doesn't have eyes in this case. And I can imagine that black will be getting some territory on the right side and also should be able to swallow up these three white stones on the left. So in that case, uh, they could go into an end game. Right, um, it will be a flower quo. That's SDSD uh, asking if it will be a flower quo for black. But if it's not a direct quo, then um, it, it might not always work anyway. So yes, so it, um, I sort of don't know at this point.
Um, I think after the top, okay, that's uh, 1,001 Q. <laughs> Is that really a go rank? Um, after white captured the top side, um, I've been consistently thinking that maybe it's good for white. Um, but it does depend on what happens in the center on the bottom side here. So uh, I wouldn't say black is good or ahead. Um, but I think it does depend on, the, on, on what happens in the corner here. And in some cases, it's going to be an end game. So I think black has, uh, as far as human play is concerned, I'd say black has even, even chances. Yes, so St Stefan Heistel, hope I pronounced that close to correct, took a peek at the bot evaluation which said that white was good. Um, after the fight with white I-12, so after white played, that would be the attachment in the center of the board. So, so this move here was I-12. So even after white played here, Uh, well, it's I-13, but I think this is a moving mix. So, yeah, conceivably, yes, but it's still very difficult for white to... Um, it's a more dangerous situation for white than it is for black. So every move that white plays is really difficult. And he's going to run out of time, too. So um, I think black has plenty of chances here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they dragon is saying black looks big, but white is SGS, so that's Eugene. So, yeah, um, very common thing to uh, say. I think it's gradually getting less true. I think the younger players are more challenging than they were before. So, even Shinjin so um, is not perfect. Oh, Joe is asking, what is the flower call? That's a code where only one side stands to lose a lot. Okay, so it looks like white answered here. I think that black has um, a chance to catch up in territory in this in this end game. So flower code, um, uh, strictly speaking, the, the phrase is it's a flower viewing code. So um, the idea is that one player... Um, is having a relatively easy time and can be viewing the flowers, which is a thing in Japan. You, you, um, the flower in, in this case is actually um, a cherry blossom. So yes, so one player is enjoying the cherry blossoms while the other person is sweating about the call. So it's a one-sided call. Okay, so white has to deal with this group here. So again, black played from the center, so he's not he's not making it easy for white, but he's not going for territory either. Okay, Ofer Zivory was asking. Do you think white had a simpler alternative to I-13? Actually, um, I was thinking on the move after that. When white cut from the center, 
I think if white had played from the other side like this, and then then here. Now in this case, I think this is okay for white. White gets to capture the, the black stone at two. Then I would be happy with this variation. So if black plays here, white plays here. And I like this one also, because if black cuts, uh, for instance, something like this, should be okay for white. Yes. So I think, ah, oh, sorry, not, not the wedge, this one. So I think this would have been relatively simple. And maybe it was, it was definitely this move that took it out of uh, uh, my comfort zone. So. Ah, avoiding black cutting. Okay, uh, Ofer is asking about that position once more. Let's take a look. So, um, I think I'm I'm pretty okay with that fight where White has played here. So, like playing a more a move more like this. Um, he was saying J thirteen. No, I, I don't think so. Um, no, I'm okay with this. I think this is... Uh, yeah, that's a bit slow. And it could get into trouble anyway. So I... I don't know. My I guess... Um, my ultimate answer is okay. I don't know. But I, I just think this is... This should be... This looks easy enough to me. So I don't see any reason not to play this way for white. So yeah, white did get into trouble here. To a certain... So if he had played from this side, uh, then this would not be forcing. So in this case, black can bump against him. Uh, yeah, so, but usually this is forcing anyway. So it's not really a serious uh, threat that black has here, I don't think. I guess white would answer here. So this would obviously this would be much better than the than the game variation. Or even if black played here. Here. Hmm. This is conceivable. Even in this case, white would be able to play here. No, that's not right. Well, he would be able to play away. Oh, that would be pretty big. Yeah, so I guess this attachment here was a good move. It did, it did leave some Maji there. Okay, so white's escaping out into the center. It's not as if these stones are going to die, but when white does it this way, I don't think white has two eyes. So ultimately, I think black going to be able to get this this kind of scenario where black gets the whole 
bottom side here. So that would give black a lot of territory. And a pretty close game. So I think we could be going into an end game. Right, exactly, Stefan. Um, sometimes the computer valuations, especially as the game approaches the end, it, I, you might say the computer is so confident that um, the winning percentage um, sways a lot um, with very minor mistakes. Okay, so... Uh, less the right size. I now I think the question for Black is, he just he does want to finish the bottom side. And uh, without um, backing off at all, so he wants he wants a big bottom side here. Okay, so if nothing happens on the bottom side, that's a pretty big black territory. We do have to be careful of this one. So this would this could be the final dramatic fight here if if white did that. So white has a forcing move in the center. White has a forcing move here. And this is threatening to capture in a net. That would capture the three black stones. Problem is, white's group on the right is, is in danger too. So, um, this kind of fight, there's there's still potential for this kind of thing to happen, which could be really exciting. But of course, if white starts with one, it's really dangerous for the white group in the center also. Oh, he started with the hunt. Okay, maybe maybe we get another fight here. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jason B was saying, why would white play the empty triangle? And we're talking about O17, I'm pretty sure, instead of playing it Q17 first. And just seeing how white put two stones in there, I, I sort of expect that it was a mistake. Okay. Um, I think Shinjinso is pretty much out of time. I can't actually show it to you right now. Um, but he's he, he doesn't seem to have any, just a few minutes on the clock. And I think that uh, Gu Zihao has something like 20, 25 minutes. Okay, so another trade.
So black gave up a lot of territory on the bottom side here. But uh, that strong position that black got in the center is going to make it more difficult for white's group to escape. So we're back to the scenario where the life or the death of the white group is, is, still, is still an issue. Okay. This is getting wild. Okay, Phenokonomus. Maybe you can destroy Black's territory on the bottom, but there's still a cut on the fourth line there. So that's L4, L16. No, it's I16, sorry. So if Black cuts there, uh, Black does get most of the territory back. Okay, why didn't White cut at seven K17? That's R1 fell off. A good question. Um, White didn't cut because Black wouldn't connect against that. So it's, it's oh wow. If White plays here, if White plays here, Black will play here, and it's not necessarily good for White. So like White can capture here. Um, I guess Black would play here. Um, not really accomplishing so much. So if black had connected, then it would have been good that white got some extra forcing moves like this. Uh, so that would give white an extra forcing move at five. But the truth, the fact is black will not connect. So even after the game move, if at some point white were to cut here, uh, connecting at the fourth line is the one move that black would not play. So um, conceivably, black could play underneath, and it would be a bad exchange for white. Uh, or black could play, try to find something else in this case. But uh, the cut is never going to be a connection for black until later in the game. So that that's why white didn't play that. Right. So Jason B said K17 is too small. In a way, that's that's another way to explain it, I suppose. Okay. So Black's trying to kill this white group, it seems. Black did just give up a lot of territory, though. C11. C11 is a big move that's still waiting to be played, yes. Somehow I get the feeling that the attack in the center is going to continue. Right, so uh, let's see. <laughs> yes, White has a lot of places to run, but not a lot of ice space. Indeed.
Okay, that's forcing enough. Okay, so how to continue the attack? G6. Mm -hmm. Peeping at G6 is a shape. So that would be... Oh, where's my pointer? Okay, sorry about that. G6 is here, right? So peeping here is shape. And it sort of works in multiple ways. So... And the latter favors black again. So like in this variation. Oh. So that wasn't good. So he plays here. And he's going to play here. So in this variation. I don't really. I, I have to put it on the board. So here. Here. Uh, that didn't work for Black, did it? Okay. So he can't cut it. Might play here. That would be cut off. So I think uh, uh, getting profit like this, for instance, would be conceivably... That would be pretty big, actually. Uh, it could conceivably good be good enough. He's going on a big hunt. Yes. Okay. There, there are trades that could make the... Um, at this point, like, Black gave away a lot of the bottom side, but still a trade could... Uh, cons I think a trade could make it a close game. Looks like uh, Guji House still has about 15 minutes, something like that. This is pretty chaotic. Okay, when black plays c11, can white answer at b11? Um, well, it looks pretty risky already. So, um, regardless of that, that's Victor not asking, can white answer c11 with b11? That is an issue. Um, so, at some point, if black plays here, I will, it, will white be able to answer here is the question. And maybe not. So, like, if we say something like this happens, something like this happens, um, White probably has to be ready to give that much up. So that that would be my that's my gut. In most cases, yes, White would probably not answer it. Be left is what I would say. And because it's already it's already dangerous. It's already dangerous when Black does something like that, or even something like this. It's already dangerous. Right. Well, yeah, W. Zhang. Um, Moyo games, they're different every time. So, like, it's not like they have patterns that we can easily remember. 
And yeah, dealing with Moyos, it's a kind of a special spell. Actually, Shinjinso is pretty good at. Uh, but this was really tough. <laughs> One dragon is saying I could die here. Um, yeah, dying here is something just about any of us could do, I think. Yes, actually the peep there, that variation I gave up on um, it could actually work. So this way, and then here, and cutting here. In this variation, Black, uh, Black did get the cut here. So if White answers that, then Black can extend and cut White off. White answers on this side. This would be, of course, a win for me. So, yes. So, black could actually do this. And nine would be a valid threat. So, in this variation, Mike can't really afford to give up this much, can he? That's a lot. Or maybe black goes. That might be good. That would be a lot to give up. And then here. And then here. <clears throat> this looks pretty dangerous. Dangerous for white. And uh, Guji House has... has Something like 10 minutes. So I'd say he's probably using his final time to try to read it out. Calculate this whole thing. Okay, I didn't think of that move. This does accomplish the idea The um, it does cut white off. But it's a bit slower doing it, isn't it? Okay, I think uh, W. Zhang is giving us some information from his AI again, saying uh, the Guji Hao attack after the attachment was very sharp, and apparently one slack move at Q17, so white protecting the corner, the lower right corner, was enough to make this an even. Or maybe slightly favorable for black game. Uh, yeah, it's sort of borderline, isn't it? I say this game could still go either way. And I think that Shinjin so is probably in overtime. Okay, Finn Economist has to go to sleep because he's in America. So in America it would be, I guess it would be rather late at night. G9 seems a reasonable choice for white. Yes, so that's uh yes, I agree. Uh, just just come back to the channel on uh, the YouTube channel and we'll still have the video. So just look for the live broadcast and you'll find the video. Okay, it looks like he's trying to kill it. You can sort of tell when Black plays from the side that doesn't make any territory. He's trying to kill the white group.
if black fails to kill the white group all these black stones that black played on the on the let's see it's the the ninth line there they're not making any territory so yeah they they black has to kill the white group to make them good moves okay suddenly the players speed up Okay, so my snap response would be to start attacking the lower left corner. So usually black gets to push through on the third line. And usually this is forcing. So white would probably answer here. And that would reinforce black to a great degree. So then, then black could be thinking about either playing here or uh, coming back to this side maybe. I don't see how all of this is really improving White's situation. Could be that Guji House still has several minutes in his time. Right, so yes, R1 Veloff is commenting, um, White does seem to still have a lot of space, and that's true, but uh, that is, to a certain degree, that's um, made less true by the fact that Black has such solid positions. So um, these solid walls here make it dif difficult for White to make eyes inside here. I think White could probably make one eye. Wow. Why did he play that move? I don't really get black playing that. Okay. So white kicked. It's the same same idea. White's trying to make life in the corner. Right, yeah, I, I would have played the knight's move. I think the knight's move looks better. This is the usual move. No, oh, he kicked. Okay. I think white loses a little territory when black was placed on the underneath, but it's not a big difference. Okay, so black, how to attack? That's the question here.
Demon Fist 2 is asking, I wonder, are the white in the center alive? So that's a good question. Um, I'm not so sure myself. So white does have a cut there in the center. So let's see what happens if white cuts in this. So let's just uh, say black plays. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe black should cut. In the center. White does have this cut. Now if black connects, white can capture two stones here. So this would capture... They can't escape. Yeah, they can't escape. And black plays here. Now this would be pretty pointless. It would just cut with Kota and black would be able to play on this side. Maybe white can play here. Ah, that's not good though. Is it? That would be, I guess that would be bad for white. What would be a ko? This would be dangerous on this side. It would be a call. That would be bad. Yes, and this would be bad. So yeah, white does have something there. So black has to deal with the threat of this cut now. Wow. So what's he trying to do? Is he trying to attack the black group on the right? Okay, it looks like white is trying to attack the black group on the right, but I don't really see how this is going to work. Pretty wild variation. I, I'm surprised every time he plays a move. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah, it looks like White's trying to attack the black group on the, on the right. But I'm not so sure about that. First of all, White has to stop the connection to the to the left here. And Black has a potential eye on the right side. Yeah. And that's still, it's still kind of a co. Cool. Okay, so the life or the death of the White group is... It's less of an issue now, because white's already in a bad shape in the lower left corner. So now it's, a, it's more a question of black settling the group in the lower right. And he should be okay if he can. So is he going to connect underneath? He can connect underneath. It's not 100% dead yet, so that's uh, the le lower bottom corner. The lower left corner, it's not 100% dead yet. But uh, the, the problem is that White's not making any... not accomplishing it. So it's really weird.
So this is just connected. It's connected already. So White can still get something in the corner, but he hasn't done anything good for his group in the center. Actually, he's made it worse for the group in the center because he's not he's not creating any eyes. So yeah, it looks like it's almost over. It looks like White is sort of crashing here. So, like, if we just look at the lower left corner, uh, White can probably still save it, because if White connects at the 3-3 three, three point, um, it, it's maybe Black's just going to cut on the fourth line. So, in that case, White would be able to live in the corner. But it wouldn't do any good. White feels behind. I agree with Nolan Debris. White feels behind. Jason B's 1 3 a.m. Take her all. Uh, just remember to come back to the channel, my channel, and you can find this video. There's going to be a video of this live commentary. You can watch it. Okay, so Black is just playing this move as a forcing move before he cuts on the fourth line. So White's going to end up having to play two moves towards the corner, I think. And uh, Black, yeah, the, the White group in the center has not made any improvements yet, so it's still in trouble. I think it's just looking good for Black. Hello, Jeffrey Young. Hello and good evening from Malaysia, he says. Hey, uh, in Twitch we have Z Bass eleven. What are their time settings? It was two hours apiece, and they, I think that's, I think they've both used up all of their basic time, and so they're in overtime, which is sixty seconds, uh, five sets of sixty seconds. No, he's not going to resign yet. Okay, so ideally White would like to live in the corner with Sente, but he's not quite going to be able to do it. So White, um, if White lives in the corner, I think it's reasonable to expect Black to cut on the fourth line at F, uh, F4, F16 that is, F4. Is it F4? F16. So, um, White would, so first, first of all, like normally you would expect White to play here. And I think it's reasonable for Black to cut here. So like this would be a move that White would play next. And then here. So there's no eye for White in that area. Uh, White could probably play something like this or something like this. Uh, White, White's probably going to be able to play a move and settle this side. But of course the corner dies in this case. So that's not good enough. 
Or if white plays here, if white needs two moves in the corner to live, uh, black could play something in the center. Um, it's starting to look really dangerous for white. White would like to be able to live with something like this. So if we do it this way, and assume the same kind of thing, I think this is going to be dead. So like this, like this. Yeah, it's just dead. Yeah, so I don't see any way for white to live with only the one stone in the corner, which is uh, pretty important. Okay. No, that's not right. Yeah, it looks like they're still playing. Just checking. Some... He should be in overtime, but he could be using several, more than one set of his 60 seconds. So I'm, I'm sort of wondering why I'm, we're not getting a move here. And I'm trying to check with my various apps. Okay, looks like White played the Kosumi. This is the best try, you see. But it's, it, it, uh, my calculation there is correct. It's just not a lie. So White can live in the center. But it's not, the corner is not alive yet. So yeah, let's choose a move in this. Why well, can cut here? Cut here works. So there's this thing where white would be able to connect up in this direction. Yeah, but black... So if black plays here, then white can play here. And this is going to be a ko. So this is a ko like uh, if black plays here and here, white would play a ko like this. Or uh, white plays here. This would still be a ko. So this ko. So there's a ko here in the lower left corner. Uh, so if black plays at 4 and white plays at 5, white gets a ko at least. <clears throat> Um, by the way, if white plays here, this is the center of three stones, and this this kills it. However, black plays here. Now, if white just connects, there's not enough room. So this is sometimes the key point. Um, but black can play here and kill it. So that was working even in the variation where white not played that hunt. It's a very similar thing. This kills the corner, so it just kills the corner. So when the corner is going to die, and I think black's winning now. Gabriel Gonzalez. Oh, he resigned? Yes. Looks like... Looks like black resigned. Okay, yes. So we have a win for... I mean, black won. White resigned and um, Guji Hao won. So Guji Hao is now the winner of the tournament. So that was a best of three final. Guji Hao won the second and third games. So congratulations to Gu.
and thank you all for staying to the end um and ended with a kill after all uh, sort of so uh thank you all and i'll be back next opportunity i'll be finishing